Hello, Earthlings. Welcome to another vegan panel. So you're welcome along. Um, we weren't going to do more than one, but here we are doing number two. Um, <laughs> because hey. we... Hey, we number two. <laughs> yeah. yes. We kind of put second one a mini, probably. <laughs> yeah, we prepared far too much last time, as you often do in, the, in these circumstances. So um, welcome to the people coming in. Um, hello there. Um, now, uh, Andy is going to be a little bit delayed, possibly about 20 minutes. Um, so we'll um, get him to join when he arrives. So how's everybody doing? You all doing well? You survived the week, I see. Everyone still alive, Ronnie? <laughs> Just about, yeah. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> Ah, clinging on with my fingernails to uh, yeah, yeah you well, always I, say I, just I, I about, was, don't you? you I was well enough to about. do a bit of door dropping this morning around my local area, so I'm still ooh, you still radical, you up. radical, you. I right. had to go and have some sleep <laughs> afterwards, though. Oh, did you? Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, all that, all that pushing the uh, the the uh, letterbox is open. I know. Yeah, it that's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, with the um, with me wooden spoon. All right, I thought he was going to say wooden leg for a minute there. Well, you know, that might not be far off, to be honest. What's the wooden spin for? <laughs> to stop, to, 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 to prevent my fingers being bitten by dogs. You see, um, it, it's not because it, you have lurking dogs that don't, if dogs bark, you think, oh, there's a dog there behind the letterbox. So I've got to be really careful. But you get some that don't bark, they just lurk in, mm -hmm. in wait for someone to put something through the letterbox so they can bite them. So I've having been bitten a few times, I thought, no, I've got to do something about this. So I, I always use some kind of stick to push the leaflets through, and I would advise everyone to do that who does door dropping. Yeah, and um, yeah, like um, a wooden spoon works really well, doesn't it? Wooden spoon, yeah, wooden spoons. Yeah. Good, you need yeah. to yeah. pin something and get it on Amazon. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> people do think I'm a bit weird walking along with a wooden spoon. They think, "What? It's the person in that running. It's not that. It's the other thing. <laughs> it's the person inside the house that sees a wooden spoon coming through their layer box. Like, he's, he's stirring up trouble. Yeah, <laughs> there we are. Right, people. Um, so, um, welcome along, and uh, welcome to the second, as I said, uh, panel. So, oh, Cliff, it didn't it didn't make it jump out your skin this week, then? No, it wasn't too loud. Yeah, that's actually quite good. I like that. Yeah, it's quite nice, isn't it? Okay, so um, well, we were going to talk about um, you know language use and abuse as we did last time, and then we were going to move on to um, issues like intersectionality, maybe things definitional uh, issues. So we're going to try and keep it strictly down to one issue, which is <laughs> intersectionality, which is it's interesting, really. For me, it's almost like it's an issue that's come and gone in the movement a little bit. But I know that might not be David and Cliff's experience. So, it's, so this is going to be quite, um, quite interesting. So, um, yeah. So uh, let, let's do a, a quick tour around what we think intersectionality is. Um, I'll, I'll looking at my screen. So, uh, you you want to go first, David? Um. No, I, I just go by the definition uh, by uh, Kimberly Crenshaw. That's it. Okay. What about you, Cliff? Um, so I, I haven't even looked up a definition, but I, I guess in the vegan movement, we're speaking up against the subjugation of other animals. And intersectionalism is the inclusion of human beings in that discussion or argument. Okay. That would be my understanding anyway. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie? Well, to be honest, it's not something I've really I've really thought about. Oh, we're all well prepared for this, aren't we, lads? Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's <laughs> it, you know what I mean up, up until up until this show, it, it's not somewhere I've ever gone, to be honest. And it's not a debate I've really been involved with with people. I've just kind of got on with you know, got on with kind of promoting um veganism. But I kind of did look up the diction at uh, the definition in various dictionaries today, 
um, a Cambridge dictionary, they all pretty much say the same. Cambridge dictionary says the way in which different types of discrimination, uh, um, in other words, unfair treatment um, because of a person's sex, race, etc., are connected to and affect each other. The theory of intersectionality highlights the multiple avenues through which racial and gender oppression are experienced. So from that, it seems to be something that kind of really just applies to humans. And I kind of don't understand from that where animals come into it, if you see what I mean. Yeah, that's because that's because they don't. It's not as though black dogs are subject to racism. Yeah, Although, yeah, yes. funny enough, there is some discrimination against black dogs. Uh, but uh, There's but, discrimination yeah. against black cats. They're very hard to um, find homes for. I think um, black dogs are also in mm. shelters. Of, of yeah, them, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, so intersectionality, um, as I understand it, is a little bit like you were saying there, Ronnie. And the name comes from the idea of, of intersects in the... Um, the American thing, so we would say crossroads. So it'd be cro crossroad. It's um, I, I, I can't even th think of the word it'd be. But so intersectionality is because of the the intersection of these ideas, right? So that so that's really the kind of thing that that we're we're kind of getting at. Um, and it's got it's not really a brand new idea in the sense that um, it's very close to something like logic of domination, which is an eco feminist kind of idea. And that comes from people like uh, Karen. Um, ooh, what's Karen's uh, last name now? I forgot. <clears throat> but then you've got Val uh, Plumwood, and she's she's done work on um, feminism as, and the kind of mastery of of nature. This kind of idea that um, that patriarchy kind of uh, is exploitative towards women, but also of the environment. So this is the the, the forerunner to eco feminism. Then you've also got ideas like uh, commonalities of oppression, which uh, which is associated with um, Patrice Jones, and then the entanglements thesis from David Nyberg. So that's the entanglements of oppression and liberation. <coughs> so that that's the kind of general idea. So um, I've actually put together. Um, it's exactly two minutes long, and it's um, a little a video which should explain this for us. And um, it comes from Kimberly Crenshaw herself, and then someone called uh, Patricia um, Collins. So let's go for this, shall we? Let's see if we can get this on. Intersectionality is just a metaphor for understanding the ways that multiple forms of inequality or disadvantage sometimes compound themselves and they create obstacles that often are not understood within conventional ways of thinking about anti-racism or feminism or whatever social justice advocacy structures we have. Intersectionality isn't so much a grand theory, it's a prism for understanding certain kinds of problems. Um, number two, so now we know we need to have better ways of talking across movements. We need to have better ways of determining how to represent certain issues. We need better ways of building movement infrastructures that actually ask how do we connect up. So I want to say that in 50 years, this was the wake up call. This was the moment when we recognize that actually we, we do have a greater constituency than we think. Then I had my inspiration. So I had my little, you know, my little, it was old school. I, I admit it, a lot of it was old school, but I was pretty mellow. I didn't anticipate that I would be this fired up. But there's something about hearing that song until the killing of black men, black mother's sons is as important as the killing of white men, white mother's sons. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes because that is the essence of intersectionality. It says you cannot just worry about the killing of your children. You have to think about the killing of other people's children. And if you really want your children to be safe, you have to keep going down that path in terms of thinking about the connections between your child, your son, young people, your girls, your daughter, your ethnic group, your religion, your sexual partner, whatever it may be. That's the connectedness. There it is in that one little line. So. Okay. So. Just to summarize that then, so Crenshaw is saying that intersectionality is just a metaphor. 
so it's seen it's seen not as an identity but a tool and she said it's not a grand theory it's a prism or a lens with which to look at the world and then in relation to um, how it would work out in terms of social movements she was talking about we need a better way of talking across them in relation to how to connect up as she put it which really is the kind of steve best alliance politics kind of angle to all this so it's the idea from best that we are not powerful enough on our own to bring about change and so therefore we need to be involved with alliance politics there's a more anarchist idea which is called we are each other uh which is not that we were necessarily in alliances um with with different ideas who maintain this in the same box it's more that by working together we become each other so it's it's as though everyone becomes a feminist everybody becomes anti-racist everybody becomes vegan that, that that kind of thing and then collins and um collins um the reason that she com comes up because most people don't talk about um Patricia, uh, collins in relation uh very much to uh intersectional because crenshaw is seen as the the person who founded the idea but some people say that collins actually did it but she talks a lot about intersectionality she's also a sociologist so i actually i actually like her stuff and her talks are really kind of very entertaining and um interesting and thought-provoking and they're, they're all on the internet now and so again she's talking about thinking about connections you know uh, so it was called what what is intersectionality that was the first thing what intersectional really means for movements was the second clip. And then Collins was talking about, uh, to the Grand Valley um, University student, State University, and that great line, we who believe in freedom, I know, we who believe in freedom <laughs> cannot rest until it comes, which is, I think is, is a brilliant uh, line. And in fact, it's very similar, and David, you might know this, very similar to something that... Um, that Leslie Cross said, funny enough, as well. Um, but um, yeah, so 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 that kind of sets the scene as that's that's what um, intersectionality means in a theoretical sense. And then my own understanding of it is is that it developed, it grew. Um, some people said, okay, we just talk about race and gender, and Crenshaw herself said well it's an academic concept so i expect it will be applied and used elsewhere and so there's a few kind of um videos where she's saying well you know it's been used here and been used there and this kind of stuff but she she kind of expected that and then going back to your point ronnie nothing to do with other animals it's to do with social movements and it's to do with them working together and it's to do with alliance politics right and so that's that's how, that's how I would kind of understand it. Um, it was very big about 10 years ago in the movement. And then people also talked about pro-intersectionality, which I, I adopted this idea of, um, of rather than calling yourself uh, somebody who's into intersectionality, you'd say that you were pro-intersectional or pro-intersectionality, that, that kind of thing. And then it's kind of faded away uh, really within the movement, um, apart from, you know, a few people talk about how some people are kind of bullying animal rights advocates because of the human rights element to it. And so I think that's where, <coughs> correct me if I'm wrong, that's where Cliff and David is coming from, I think. Is that right? Mm, yeah. There's other problems with it as well for me because, you know, even those clips that you played, um, she was talking about people. Is she including animals in that definition? I seriously doubt that she was. So for me, animals are people too. It may sound like a weird concept to anybody listening who doesn't understand animal rights or veganism, but for mm -hmm. me, animals are people too, so they must be included in that conversation. But I think a lot of, and, and this is not everybody like yourself, Roger, I, I, don't, I don't have any problem with intersectionality if it is applied logically and evenly across the board. And that doesn't mean to say we have to be perfect all the time. But if somebody claims to be inter pro intersectional, as you put it, and then excludes millions of other earthlings that are 
persecute it and subjugate it on this planet well then that's incredibly problematic and it's also problematic for me just quickly that they will let things slide that wouldn't be allowed to slide uh, in a human context so if somebody was being racist or sexist or homophobic none of those things would be allowed to slide within the movement whereas somebody could be at an intersectional event and be literally sitting eat, eating the dead body of somebody and nobody would say boo to them so that that's the two problems with it for me i get the general concept and in a human rights aspect i understand it but when we include other animals as you do roger so i don't i don't have a problem with with the way that you do it and the way that you apply it is absolutely correct and i think we should all be that way i mean i would shit hold intersectional values but when it comes into the vegan movement or as a social justice movement and other animals are excluded by the vast majority of people who claim to be intersectional well then that's seriously problematic for me hmm. Yeah, there, there's an asymmetry um, among the movements and uh, among these people that uh, claim to be pro-intersectionality. And if you if, if you see the axis, there there is like a graphic, the axis of oppression or something like that, which is uh, like on top is uh, the, they have all the privileges, and uh, below you have the oppressed groups. And uh, there's no animals in the graphic right. at all. Um, hey, Danny. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I didn't mean to um, interrupt to be speaking. <laughs> you, you'll have to have detention, Andy, coming late. <laughs> Yeah. Hello, hello. Yeah, well, 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 welcome, Andy. Um, can you just repeat the last bit of that, David? I didn't get that last bit. Yeah, like the, they have a graphic with all the operations and uh, it's supposed to be the privileges on top and yeah. the, the um, oppressed groups uh, the below. On the bottom, um, yeah, yeah. On okay. the bottom, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they have all these lines, like this uh, privileged group is oppressing this, uh, this uh, uh, discriminated group uh, on the bottom. And there is no animals in the graphic at all. And they have like several of these graphics going on, but the the, the animals are, uh, are are non-existent, non non-existent in the graphic. So I think there's there's an asymmetry. Well, how, how, uh, so yeah, well, I'm not quite sure how the other animals would be in there, um, but I do in terms of the movement. And of course, uh, what our movement does is call out anybody, wherever mm -hmm. they are, if they're not vegan. And so, but we we can we can say that if you if you're looking at commonalities of oppression, or if you're looking at these interlinks, uh, and that you know that that's connected to that, we've already got lots and lots of theories, which suggest, like the logic of domination and Nybert's ideas, which suggest that we if we exclude what we do to other animals, then. We, you've only got a partial, a partial version of intersectionality, mm -hmm. which is what you're kind of saying, right? Yeah. And so, so I, th I think that's what it is. What, what we, our job, and Steve Best would say this, our job is to figure out ways of talking to um, other movements in terms of alliance politics, in terms of cooperating with them to make us bigger and stronger. You're shaking your head, David. Yeah, I don't think that works. It has been tried before. It, it's it's always the anthropocentric view that it, that prevails in the end. Yeah, well, that's what's been said here. But what you see, the point is, um, we're talking about <clears throat> people who are into intersectionality who are vegan and people who are not vegan. So you're not, you're obviously not going to get the non-vegan intersectionality people be, be, being being but they're the ones they're the ones that we need to call out in mm. the same way as they would call us out and they do for example um there's a lot of people in what you might call progressive groups that have difficulty working with our movement because of groups like peter 
and 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 stuff which, which are seen to kind of damage um the interests of women for example uh they've done some things which you could call racist uh in the past and so um i mean the, the, there is um a guy called anthony nicella the second he, he wrote uh co-wrote all the steve best books uh you know in, including terrorists or freedom fighters and this kind of stuff and he said that often in the states in radical cir circles you've got to spend the first 10 minutes explaining that you're not peter because otherwise they won't they they won't they don't want to kind of work with you because of what peter stands for you know all the naked protest all, all that kind of stuff right yeah. um and so they will call us out for racism and sexism and it's okay for us to call them out for speciesism that's the way that's the way it's got to work but but, the, but does peter represent us i don't think so I don't no, no, I, well, no. Well, I think I think then you're bringing up just like a non-vegan point. There is the fact that that non-vegans will find anything at fault in order for them to resist our message, and 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 it's almost like Peter for a radical group almost hand them their excuse to ignore us on the plate, kind of literally in terms of of what they do on the street sometimes, and so they're almost like going, okay, you know, we're ridiculous. Here you go use this to, to for you then to ignore our message so that's that's how they do it i don't think so, the things even there's you have to look somebody said to me once you can't put a scale on suffering or oppression and i think you absolutely can it might be an unpopular opinion so somebody making a sexist comment which most people do not do is not the same <laughs> as taking somebody, hanging them upside down with a shackle around their ankle and sticking a knife in their bloody throat. So those, you can't, you're comparing apples and oranges for me in, in the level of suffering caused and also in the scale. Like we're talking upwards of 76 billion land animals, never mind the fish. Um, so for them to use, yes, but like I said earlier, I hold intersectional values to the very best of my abilities. But these people, you're saying they're using that against us. And I don't think you can compare those things in any way, what shape or form. One of them is a massive, might be an unpopular word, Holocaust against animals, non-human animals. And then you're talking about people being sexist oh yes sexism is really friggin' terrible and we need to get rid of the patriarchy i agree with that but we're talking like one's down here yeah, and one's like I, off I, the I friggin chart um but just just to, just to quickly interject then um just because i totally agree with that notion the one thing that i've had accused of me about peter in the past is obviously they put down that euthanized tens of thousands mm -hmm. of domesticated animals so that would be a far more like for like because that, that's, that's something that I, yeah, I mean, absolutely 100% agree. But I mean, going back to like Roger's point, I've had people in the past say all vegans are supportive of Peter and Peter do this to dogs and cats. That's that accusation I've seen numerous times. So I suppose that that's a bit more balanced than just a sexist thing, because I totally agree. I mean, in terms of a scale, not really the same, is it? What, what people do in terms of non-vegans, what they do is they try and associate you with people who are controversial in order to discredit you know, they're kind of trying to damage your credentials. On TikTok, they do it with the vegan teacher, yeah. right? Do you support the vegan teacher? And therefore, right? Uh, everywhere else, it's do you, do you support uh, Peter? In fact, um, we've got a clip coming up from AFCO, uh, which David um, recommended, um, not right now, but, um, and, and she, she mentions the problem of, of Peter and the HSUS and this kind of thing, because th these are a, block for us making pro progress uh but in terms of uh, what you said cliff that that is their campaign so if they're feminists and they're mm -hmm. trying to challenge patriarchy that is their campaign mm -hmm. and so one one element of intersectionality is well let me try and bring this up on on here perhaps um okay i'll get you off the bottom there um andy um, if we just look at uh, this slide, perhaps uh, now it's not easy to uh, to read. This is kind of what, what intersectionality is and what intersection 
isn't. It's kind of what we've said al already. So I'm I'm not going to read all this out, but it's a tool to understand the entanglements of all privilege and oppression that we've said that. Um, intersectionally is not, this is quite interesting, it's not a movement, it's not a word to replace veganism, not academic jargon, not a scare word, and it's not divisive. Now, I know you're going to have something to say about that, but the, the main point um, about this uh, is a little line here that is difficult to read, so I'll just read it, read it out to you, which is, recognizing the futility of trying to achieve total revolution by fighting for someone in a way that hurts, devalues, or oppresses someone else. Okay. And so that's where you get the problem with if you're doing things which are sexist. Um, I mean, there's, there's, lot, there's lots and lots of um, uh, species language in our movement, you know, calling other animals it and this, but there's a heck of a lot of ableist language. And again, some some people some people would would worry ab about those kind of things. And it's almost as though if we if you want to make alliances with somebody, you've got it's a it's a give and take, right? And um, and then if we want to make alliances, it's, it's because we want to make our movement bigger and stronger, mm. right? And again, Could you give us an example of ableist language? Sorry to interrupt you, but people in the movement use in the vegan movement. Well, you get a lot of people using the R word for a start, which is the one that most people just completely reject. Do you know which? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Okay. Uh, well, trigger warning. Um, uh, I mean, people like vegan ga gains will will will. Oh yes, yes, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I've heard them say it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so there's that, but there's also uh, crazy, uh, and there's uh, you know things like that, lunatic, and you know all those kinds of things. Th th uh, those those words mean dif different things now mm. to what they originally meant. That, that's not that's not the point, Ronnie. The 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 idea is that if you're if you're concerned about your language, what you try and do is for the sake of others, and and one mistake that is always made in this argument is people think it's about offence. And the old oh, people are going to take offense at that word. It's not about offense. This is one of the biggest mistakes that people make. What it is, is about trauma and hurt. And so, for example, if you look at domestic violence, for example, when um, people are being beaten up and whatever else goes on, a lot, a lot of their oppression is linguistic. So they're told that they're stupid and they're crazy whilst they've been beaten up right and so it's not it's not that when they hear those kind of words it offends them it actually hurts them because it re it returns them to that situation and mm -hmm. so if you if you've got a lot of linguistic oppression in a sexual assault for example then just those words can bring all that back and we know the trauma of sexual assault in relation to going through the police system, that brings it back. A lot of people don't go to court because that brings it back, but we can bring it back in our language. So it's just so about being should, careful. Should we not say, should we not say asshole or bastard? No, well, that, well that, that's the thing. It's like saying, you know, oh, you're, you're potty. But the point, the point is, well, asshole is this maybe one you could argue about. But I mean, if you said potty, you know, nobody's going to beat somebody up and say, and say you're potty at the same time, right? So there obviously is this kind of thing. And of course, with language, you get to a stage where there's some, you know, you, you, you kind of think, well, what, what, I can't exclude every single word just on the off chance. But if somebody tells you that that word is problematic, that's when I think we ought to be gracious and giving and, and try to reach out to them and say, okay, you know, if that's a problem, we won't use it. I mean, I How think, do you I feel about the use of the word Holocaust, Roger? As Holocaust, applied well, to animal Holocaust? Yeah, I think um, I think the phrase the animal Holocaust, Holocaust is accurate. Mm -hmm. um, but I think from an, this is a, a kind of sociological um, discipline called ethnomethodology, right? And so that's the kind of um, the methods that uh, citizens use to understand each other. So when you say the word Holocaust, then people hear the Jewish Holocaust. Mm. So even if you go out, 
out of your way to say the animal holocaust or even, you know, I'm not talking about the a holocaust, not the holocaust. Yeah, that's right. People tend to hear the holocaust. So there is that potential. But then we do know that a lot of um, uh, Jewish people uh, have used that phrase on purpose to, to, to make the connections. You know, so it, it's it's not it's not that kind of easy that particular that particular word. But, but uh, people but, would only be people would only be offended by that if they're speciesist, mm -hmm. if they think that somehow humans are more important than other animals. It seems so to that, offend it again, Ronnie. Yeah, yeah, but 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 no, I no, I kind of, um, I mean, I would use the word Holocaust in relation to what happens to animals because it's accurate if, if 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 people don't like it people don't like it is because they're speciesist because they think that somehow that that what happened to humans was more serious than what happens to other animals and that's why they not like it surely well, well yeah but i mean but there's also another thing is, is because they think of the jewish holocaust then when we use that word in relation to other animals it becomes technically inaccurate because obviously what the Nazis it's, were trying to do is eradicate a population, whereas we bring them into existence in order to exploit them. So there's, there's a huge difference there. But if, you're, if you can get them to think about the animal holocaust without reference in their head to the Jewish holocaust. Now, this is very difficult to do. And so if you can just use a word like genocide or mass killing instead, why not? Why not? In, in well, genocide, I was about to say, it's not necessarily the word, is it, that people are against? Because we've had this conversation before off air where if you can describe it in terms of numbers and say, look, this is how many we're talking about. This is what happens to them. Sometimes you'll get people that go, do you know what? That sounds like a Holocaust. So there's no wrong. There's no problem then talking about it because they've That's brought it up. Yeah. This is their yeah. interpretation of that word and you're working off that. But often if you bring it up first, it can, it can trigger a different response, a completely different response. So it's not actually the word that's a problem. It's how people's first perception or interpretation of that word is. You need to kind of find that point first, which is why it always makes more sense to let them exactly bring it the up. same when it comes to artificial insemination, that if they use mm -hmm. the R word and they go, blimey, me, that sounds like, yes, then, yes. then that's a really good conversation. But if you say it, it can be a problem. And it's just a question of just being a bit careful in order not to hurt other people. Now, we're, we're, we're vegans. We don't want to hurt anybody. So, you know, just being a bit careful with our language. I don't see that as being... Normal, but I'm speaking to people, they'll, they'll say it, and then I agree with them. I generally don't use it myself because I don't feel it necessary, but I, if I felt it necessary, I would absolutely use it because I think it is accurate. Yeah, I, th I think some of the times when they've brought it up, that's some of the best conversations I've had when they've made that connection and said, you know, this is what it sounds like, whether that's the R word or whether that's Holocaust. Mm. Like those are the mm. best times because they really seem to get it. In, in, in terms of your street work, Cliff, this is interesting to me. Would, would you, if you use the term, would you then kind of just clarify with, with the people and say, um, I, I want to talk to you about the animal Holocaust. Now, mm. I want to make it clear that I'm not talking about the Jewish. Do, do you do, do, you do no. that? Or, no, you know? no, I don't feel the need to do that. But generally, people will say it when I'm talking about gas chambers for pigs. And then somebody will say, well, oh, that's exactly what we did during the Holocaust to... Yeah. Yeah, well, that's and what, that's and then I will and I will agree with them and say yes. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll they, say yes. It is a Holocaust. It's yeah. an animal Holocaust. They brought it up. That's fine. Yeah, but I, I don't avoid saying it on purpose. Like, there's nothing in my head thinking. It just it's not my first go to during a conversation to call it an animal Holocaust. I tend to talk about the individual animal when I'm doing outreach, and try and make that person empathize and feel what the individual animal is feeling and i try not to talk about the massive mm. numbers because when you say 76 billion to somebody and well, the weird thing fish, what the hell does that mean to anybody it's just a, the number that's so exponentially big that people have, it's not relevant to them in any way whatsoever what, what do you yeah. think at this point the fact that if if you if you associate what we want to talk about with the jewish holocaust mm. which in our terms was only six to ten million people right i mean we're talking about that's the blink of an eye when it comes to the animal holocaust mm -hmm. so it's, it's almost like 
downgrading the other animals by making that comparison because so, you're you're mm. you're al you're almost like not explaining the full gravity of the massiveness of of the animal one if if you invoke thoughts of the jewish one in in in, in the in the head uh, david i'm sorry i think i cut you off there um sorry yeah i wanted to say that that it's our job it's our task to blur the lines between the difference uh, the euphemisms and uh, all the difference that, that that people try to make with language uh, between uh, human animals and non-human animals if we don't uh, make the, the the effort to to make people understand that, that the same crime the, the same uh, rights violation applies to uh, non-human animals so then then we are just failing the animals yeah well, i'm not going to disagree with that yeah. yeah i totally agree yeah I, I wouldn't disagree agree with that. I, I just think that we ought to be careful about what language we use, uh, if, if, if especially in a situation where, um, I mean, like, yeah, you say not hurting people. Well, yeah, it, like I say, the biggest mistake is, is people thinking it's about offence, where it, it, it's not. You know, it's like using the R word as in sexual violence, and. Um, and another more, another more difficult one is slavery in the sense that I'm I'm pretty okay about using the word slavery mm, because clearly time. other animals are enslaved and everybody would agree with that. But again, you're not talking about the transatlantic slave trade. And then you've got the other potential minefield, which is that numerically that there, there might have been more white slaves in the world than black ones. But that becomes very contentious then uh, in, in terms of, you know. So it's just a question of being aware of this kind of thing and just thinking, well, is it worth me using this language if the potential, you know, because like the last thing that you want to do, Cliff, when you're on the street is use words that are going to kind of stop them dead in their head mm. and they stop listening to you and go, did he just say that or did he? You know what I, mean? I, I generally describe what I'm talking about and let them come up with their own words and then I'll agree or disagree. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, I, 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 suppose, I suppose the knock-on effect of these things as well, which we don't often think about. I mean, we've we talked about this before when it comes to doctors, where someone said they've gone to the doctor. And the doctor says I have to eat red meat, whereas the doctor may well have said make sure that this particular nutrient doesn't lack, and they've made the rest of the conversation up themselves. So if you're having this conversation with someone in the street, even if they kind of it resonates with them, they may well, may well walk away and tell, repeat that to someone else and go, they said that this happens, they said that this happens, and it kind of you lose that effect that you've had on them because they've mistranslated it to someone else. So mm. I suppose it's not even necessarily the person you're engaging with directly, it's how they spread that message then too. Somebody, just as a side note, in the school thing I did last week, one of the students said to me, my doctor told me I had, had I have low iron anemia, is it? And he told me if I didn't eat red meat, I was going to die. It's like, God's sake. <laughs> don't <you> take <laughs> nutritional <laughs> advice from your GP. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but again, you don't know how much <laughs> of that is genuinely the GP saying that, or yeah. the GP just saying you need to make sure that you don't yeah, of not course. take it. And the rest of it is just them, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, in terms of um, resources and moving on, so um, do we want to go through the slideshow, or David, do you want to do the audio now, uh, the AFCO one, or do we? Because we we compiled this um, most of this slideshow kind of last week, really. Um, but I mean, it, you know. So the only thing I can suggest is if we go through the slides, the the person who suggested it we'll just have to say whether it's still relevant and you want to talk about it or whether you know it's as it were it's gone now as it were does that make sense yeah yeah but uh, yeah if no if, i think the the afco audio would be good okay right what's the acronym what does that stand for uh, afco um, yeah that that's her name that's oh, somebody's okay, name. That, that, is that the video yeah. you put in? Okay, right with you. I know that's oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me just find out if it's in the right place. I think it is. Um, give me a thumbs up if the vote if the um, audio is okay, people. Passionate about is how do we take the animal out 
of the animal rights movement so that everyone feels free to talk about this stuff. Because again, this is one of the, the destructive things about movement logic is that we put these borders around and we think that the only people who can talk about animals are people who call themselves animal rights activists or vegans. And right. I'm saying that the thing is there are people, let's say in anti-racist spaces who I run into who are not vegan, who don't completely understand or care so much, let's say about factory farming, but they are theoretically picking up the project of the animal by examining their own oppression by be, in terms of the way that they been called an animal and that was their introduction into talking about animals and some of the theory is so beautiful and connects so brilliantly to what animal rights activists are doing but a lot of these people aren't talking simply because of the politics of our movements and so that's why i always say look past a movement look past a brand look past a corporation and look at the raw oppression itself and i'd always encourage people to say like black if you're in black lives matter yeah i would actually say stay in your movement but incorporate the idea of the animal within your own logic because you're going to produce beautiful insights. And what we need is more movements and more voices, not one movement just getting more and more diverse because, the, you know, we need the knowledge to be diverse. So that would be my advice. <laughs> right. And so now I'm going to kind of flip it and, and talk yeah. about how, what advice you might give to animal rights activists or vegans. So what would you say to members of the animal rights and vegan movements who might think that while human rights is also important, so much priority is already put on human causes that it takes away from helping animals whom society sees as less important by comparison. So they might ask, isn't it okay for vegan activists to just prioritize helping farmed animals since these individuals are legally slaughtered by the billions and they really need our help? Like, can I just work on that? Yeah, and I think I, I, I might give a slightly unpopular answer here, and it wouldn't be one I would have agreed with in the past, but um, I would say I, I, I think it's okay if people are just focusing on animals. And what I mean by that, that's not to say, a lot of times in our movements today, when, I'm, when someone says something, we oftentimes hear something else. So in me yeah. saying, okay, you can only focus on animals if you want, other people might hear, wait, are you saying that you don't have to care about race and gender and all this stuff? And I'm like, no, I'm not saying that. But if what you feel called to do is, and what you feel like you have the capacity to do is to just focus on animals. I think like that's with your limited time. Yeah, you know, meaning you know, like we all care about homelessness and we don't yeah. want kids to have cancer, but we might not work on those issues. Absolutely. Right. For okay. example, just to make it personal for me, my brother is disabled. And a lot of people don't know that because I don't talk yeah. about it a lot. But that's uh, but I'm mostly known for veganism. That certainly doesn't mean that I don't care about like issues affecting disability. OK, so, David, um, you, you wanted to play that. I'm not quite sure where you wanted me to end it, but I've, I've ended it there. So I hope. Uh, that's okay. And what 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 does this say say to you? Well, the first thing she says is that uh, people who are not vegan are allowed to uh, speak against uh, factory farming, and that to me it's, uh, is problematic for our, uh, for our movement. It's like uh, um, sexists talking about uh, um, I don't know uh, women rights. Uh, it's like, well, why why are people who engage actively in rights violations allowed to uh, pose as if they were part of the solution? And also, the the, the thing about factory farming is just uh, um, it's like a red flag for me. If uh, if you're a if you're um, an animal rights activist, it's like, uh, it's not about factory farming, it's about all farming. Well, yeah, um, I think, I mean, it was interesting when, when you suggested this, I, I listened to it and I couldn't quite, I wasn't quite sure what you were gonna say about it. Um, because I think that at the beginning, I think the most, the, the, the weirdest thing is, is kind of, take the animals out of of the situation and i think she's an academic so she was talking about bracketing off of it because in actual fact most of the time she was talking about the black uh, activists and it's that that context that she was talking uh, about this and she was saying it's okay if you stay in your lane she's saying that to the black lives matter people but there's no reason for you to oppress other animals at the same time. So that goes back to to, to that slide that I, I said, which is, you know, like... Did she actually say that? Can I challenge that? I don't think she did. I don't think she said specifically that you don't suppress other animals at the same time. 
I think she said you could talk about it, but she didn't. I mean, the only way you can't oppress animals is by being vegan. She didn't specifically say that. She, she's she's not talking about people in the vegan movement. Yeah. She's talking about anti-racist activists. Mm -hmm. And she's saying if they want to focus in the same way as if we want to focus on the other animals, but if they want to focus on race, yeah. then we shouldn't do anything that's going to affect them up and neither should they with, with us. And our, our claim to them would be you should be anti-speciesist. If you want us to be anti-racist, then you yeah. need to be anti-speciesist. And um, just in dietary terms, you know, even if you don't want to completely explore, say, the philosophy of veganism, but in dietary terms, you know, be, there's no reason why all anti-racist people can't be plant-based, for example. Mm. Right? I'm con I'm confused by what she said because well, it sounded like a lot of fluff when she should have said succinctly, "You can, if you're an anti-racist um, activist." Stay in your lane and certainly do that. I'm completely fine with that. But you also must be vegan. That's what she should have said. She didn't say that. And that's where the whole thing is is so problematic. Why did she not say clearly, you cannot be a rights-based activist and a pro-intersectionist and not be vegan? Because it's, to not, me, not she did she not would... make that. She didn't make that clear at all. She, I think she was. You mean she didn't, you, she didn't use the word, you mean? Well, well, she didn't. She doesn't have to use the word. She didn't make it clear what she actually meant. She was talking around. Well, I don't even, I think, I'd like to hear it again because I don't think she made it clear that. Well, I, I, I'd, I'd like to hear it again, but if I may, if I may, just, just yeah, yeah, yeah okay. the first part again. The first, yeah, uh, I, maybe minute. But but there there is a little bit of a preamble to it, to where mm. we came in which I think explains, I, I, I actually started where David wanted to start it, but I think if you start it here, it becomes clearer, I think. Okay. But correct me if I'm wrong. In this latter part of the show, Af, I wanted to focus on some ways that activists can start to envision themselves as part of a multidimensional liberation movement. So, and that's one of your terms, multidimensional liberation. So let's start with the question, what do you say to members of the anti-racist movement, like, for example, Black Lives Matter, who don't see vegan or animal rights movement as very relevant and see that as a separate or even hostile cause? Well, for one, I don't blame them completely because right. when you look at the media, I mean, I have to give them some credit here because when you look at the media um, and you see the depiction of what it means to be an animal rights activist, I completely get why yeah. a lot of people- They call it the people, animal rights movement for a reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. because it, it looks at not only just the racial component, but the theory, the things that they care about seem so disconnected from the everyday realities of people who are struggling. Like they're like, uh, hello. And it, yeah. it, so I, I get it. But at the same time, what I would say, what I do say when I go into predominantly black communities to talk about these issues is that we have to learn to separate the raw oppression from the movement designed to tackle that oppression, right? So we have the raw oppression, which is animals are being harmed. Now we have movements designed to tackle that, let's say like PETA or Humane Society, right? right. Just because you don't like, let's say PETA, doesn't right. mean that you shouldn't care <laughs> about the actual yeah. issue at hand, which is animal oppression. And I would encourage people again, and I say this in my book, um, one thing I'm really passionate about is how do we take the animal out of the animal rights movement so that everyone feels free to talk about this stuff? Because again, this is one of the, the destructive things about movement logic is that we put these borders around and we think that the only people who can talk about animals are people who call themselves animal rights activists or vegans. And right. I'm saying that the thing is there are people, let's say in anti-racist spaces who I run into who are not vegan, who don't completely understand or care so much, let's say about factory farming, but they are theoretically picking up the project of the animal by examining their own oppression by be, in terms of the way that they've been called an animal. And that was their introduction into talking about animals. And some of the theory is so beautiful and connects so brilliantly to what animal rights activists are doing, but a lot of these people aren't talking simply because of the politics of our movements. And so that's why I always say, look past a movement, look past a brand, look past a corporation, and look at the raw oppression itself. And I'd always encourage people to say like, Black Lives, if you're in Black Lives Matter, yeah. I would actually say, stay in your movement, 
but incorporate the idea of the animal within your own logic because you're going to produce beautiful insights and what we need is more movements and more voices not one movement just getting more and more diverse because you know we need the knowledge to be diverse so that would be my advice <laughs> right and so now i'm going to kind of flip it and, and talk yeah. about how is that enough mm. yeah sure thanks so to, to me to me it's like Go ahead, David. Yeah. yeah, to me, to me, it's like the same concept mm -hmm. that uh, anima, uh, that Melanie Joy uses when she talks about uh, vegan allies. That the people who are not vegan uh, should be allowed to feel like they are, they, they are helping animals, and uh, I think it's completely problematic. And uh, I, there's an asymmetry between the animal rights movement and the other movements. No, no, no other oppressor of of the other movements uh, is allowed to talk uh, freely uh, and feel like he's part of the solution. That's my my uh, criticism of this uh, of of this point that she's making. She was saying words like care for other animals, and animals should be in the anti-racist conversation or something like that. But for me, she was flowering around what she should have said, <laughs> which is what I said earlier. Why can you yeah. not just say she, it she was talking about including your possession is untenable if you're oppressing animals. Yeah, but what, wasn't she talking about including other animals into your anti-racist theory, and then you'd end up with something beautiful? In in other words, uh, you know, you, yeah. you'd end up with something more, more connected, more intersectional. And, uh, you know, a kind of a grander understanding of oppression, rights violations, whatever you want, want to call it, mm. be because they're, they're missing that bit out. And she's saying, you know, you, sh you should include it in the same way as if they said to, to us, um, you know, you should be thinking about, you know, racism and sexism, especially if it's related to what you're doing as well. We're not mm -hmm. saying we're not saying you know move out of your lane or anything. We're just saying that you know it's back it's back to that thing, isn't it? That all all you're saying is stay in your lane, but don't hurt the other movements. Yeah, but the, well, I have two points to make. First of all, most vegans I know probably don't identify as intersectional, but hold intersectional beliefs and views. So. None of us here, I would very much doubt if any of us are sexist or homophobic or racist or any of those things. That's that seems like a natural thing for people who that's identify. that's I mean, obviously, I missed the start. I don't know if everyone did like a brief yeah. introduction, but like whenever an intersectionist comes up, I always think, whatever that question is, are you racist? Are you sexist? What no. my answer would be, I'm vegan, and that's as far as I yeah. need to, I don't, that answers it for me. I, I don't need to extend into, into each individual thing. So, mm. I mean, I can see this from both sides. Definitely people who have experienced oppression or discrimination or being singled out are more likely to understand others who are oppressed. However, mm. I totally agree that that doesn't mean they should have some sort of free pass. No, like um, yeah. that, that doesn't happen. I mean, I, I don't really I've never come across anyone who identifies as, say, an intersectionalist who would make a big point of saying, you need to take more time to talk about, I don't know, racism, for example. I've not come across that to experience it, but I would definitely disagree with that because I think that's mm. wrong. The, the, the second thing I was going to say, so in very simplistic terms, I see, so when you talk about oppression, there are obviously oppressors and those who are being oppressed. So if you are not vegan, I don't care what movement you're in. I don't care if you are LGBTQ+, I don't care if you're in BLM, I don't care if you're in a feminist movement, I don't care, you're an oppressor, full stop. That's it. And I apply the same logic to those people that I apply to somebody who is racist or somebody who is sexist or somebody, you know, do you understand what I'm saying? That's how I apply it. And I don't think that is applied equally. So I want to bring other, what's that thing the government keeps saying now? Leveling up. I want to level animals up first and then we can start talking about all these other issues. But when you're talking about all these other issues, and the animals are still way, way down here. I want to level the animals up to here, and then we can start talking about your issues. That's maybe, again, an unpopular point of view, but that's how I see it. Animals are so oppressed, 
so much more than I mean it's not a competition it's certainly not a competition but the people in the intersectional movement who are not vegan are oppressors in the same way that somebody who's racist is an oppressor they are equally bad I don't but care no, about society I don't care how society sees it what's that no nobody's arguing that they're not well I want them treat it as oppressors Exactly. I'm not saying we go out and just, you know it's not a vigilante movement. We're not going to go out and hunt people down, but this is why um, what do you call them? The alliance politics thing that Tom, what's his name, talks about? Is it Steve Tom? Best. Steve Best. Yeah. You know, it's, I totally disagree with that because I'm not. I will go out and talk to anybody about veganism, as I do all the time, and I try and bring them up to to the level of veganism. But I'm not going to work with you whilst you're an oppressor. Because you're a blatant oppressor, people will turn up at BLM events and stand and eat other animals. Like, what the hell? If you did, that, you know, if you applied that to any other logic, and people say, yeah. "Oh, yeah, but yeah. it's societal and it's accepted and stuff." But I know different. I know different, and we all know different. So I will apply my. Well, this is why you wouldn't you people. wouldn't go to Camp Beagle, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. So the reason I, I was going to go to Camp Beagle and the reason I didn't go is because when I read the petition, the last line of the petition says something to the effect of, um, it was another vegan alerted me to it. I was like, what the hell? So the last line says basically uh, sanctions the testing on other animals when deemed necessary. Deemed necessary by who? I mean, that's the biggest loophole in history. And and by me signing that petition, I would be okay. Well, some beagles would be safe. That's great. Of course, I want to save the beagles, but I'm not going to sign a petition that means that somebody else is going to be per persecuted and tortured instead. That's just, and I think that's why most of the, I see all the time. I'm not talking about Eden, signing a petition, Cliff. I'm saying yeah. you, you wouldn't you wouldn't go to the camp, right? Yeah, well, well, again, because there's it's, it's full of non-vegans. Like, why the hell would I stand outside of fence and and chant about people of you? I don't know what the chant at Camp Beagle, by the way, but I assume there is chanting and protesting and stuff. Why would I stand on one side of a fence accusing people of being animal abusers when the people I'm standing beside on my side of the fence are just as freaking bad? Like, there's no distinction between... Uh, vivisection and eating and wearing animals. Ronan, you've got a position on this, right? Well, I mean, uh, um, I mean, I mean, I'd much prefer to do vegan outreach in my own area than to go to Camp Beagle. But I have, I have gone to Camp Beagle, I think two or three times. Um, on one occasion, I gave a speech, um, and another occasion, I gave a talk, and 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 both of them really about um, the fundamental importance of veganism if we're going to put an end to animal experiments because, uh, you know, the reason those experiments exist is because of speciesism. So we have to challenge speciesism at a fundamental level. And, and that was the that was really what I said in my speech and what I said in my talk. And both were received very well by people that were there. And hopefully if there were non-vegans listening, that would have made a difference to them. I also know someone who's a, a really, really good vegan activist now who actually went to Camp Beagle because she um, she had a, a beagle dog, I think a rescued beagle dog, and read about the experiments on beagles. And so and she wasn't vegan. She went to Camp Beagle um, because she was concerned about the beagles and got talking to people at the camp who were vegan. And she's now uh, she's now a vegan activist. So there is a like that positive side to it in the sense that people can kind of be be veganized by by going there and i kind of when i went there i kind of saw it as an opportunity and i've also taken vegan literature there for their for, for their information tent and i kind of saw it as an opportunity to kind of maybe veganize those non-vegans that were there yeah, um, I kind of agree absolutely both of these. So I don't disagree with anything that Cliff's saying. And for exactly those reasons, would I want to stand next to someone that was eating a bacon sandwich, for example? No, I wouldn't. Um, absolutely no, I wouldn't. And I fundamentally oppose that. I wouldn't want to go just to stand there, for example. But however, I've been asked to do a talk at the Huntington site in June. And I've agreed on the, the attempts that 
I haven't got to go and stand there with these people. I'm actually going to try and talk about exactly this issue and say, why are we only talking about dogs and treatment and not use of all animals? So I see it as an opportunity. Because um, that's what I was going to ask, because I don't disagree with your position at all. However, if we all have this mindset of, I'm not associating with these people because of this reason, how do we ever educate them? How do we ever change their minds? How do we ever get them to stop oppressing others if we won't have the conversation or engage with them? Because well, I'm having thinking, conversations and engaging with people. So, like that's that's why I'm going to do the talk because I see that as an opportunity where on like, mm. YouTube, blah, blah, blah. I haven't got to stand next to those people and argue with them. I see that as beneficial, but yeah, I wouldn't want to do just go and stand in next to these people. But I also appreciate that if we don't, well, I think I think Cliff, does, I think Cliff I agree is with that. A, di a, di a difference between talking to people and working with them, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. So what Ronnie has said and Andy has said, I totally agree with both of you. If you have an opportunity to go there and give a speech and try and educate these people and bring them across onto our side, it's, for me, that's completely fine. But standing you know, with them, I, I think, know, I think standing a, with people who are abusing animals, it's, it's, animals. The, it's, the work, it's the working bit. But, but Cliff, you often use the, um, if you saw somebody kicking a dog uh, routine in your street mm -hmm. work, right? Yeah. Now, say somebody did, right in front of you, uh, kick the shit out of a dog, mm -hmm. and then she is badly injured. Yes. And um, you've you've then got, got to, um, you know, rush off to get your car. You know, you can't get in front of it. And, and some random person who's not a vegan says, I, I'll help you. You wouldn't, you wouldn't work with them. Um, it's not, it's... That's a good one. Well, first of all, there would be hands on first because if somebody was kicking a dog, there would be hands thrown. Sorry, <laughs> maybe these are non-violent, but <laughs> that, would have, that would absolutely <laughs> happen. I would not stand around and watch that and not do anything. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I get that. Take, take the violence out of it. What about if a dog was hit by a car? And you're not in a position to take them to the vets, but the non-vegan is. Okay, I see it as different. <clears throat> so, so the animal rising folks who broke into MBR and rescued 18 dogs. Okay. I see that as very different when you're somebody's taking a positive action to help an animal. It's totally different than standing protesting beside people. It's not the same thing. It's yeah, yeah, I can understand. I mean, I spent a long, long time in dog rescue, and finally, a couple of years ago, I walked away because I couldn't deal with the speciesism that was around me. Mm. And exactly what you've just said is how I used to justify it all the time. Yeah, okay, they're doing this, this, and this, but they've just drove 500 miles to transport this. Like, and I totally get it. You kind of feel conflicted all the time because mm. they are actively going and doing things. Quite often, these would be the people in the middle of the night that would go and do something. But yeah. That there's so many other ways that they're exploiting too so mm. it's it's very difficult and sometimes I, those conversations you'd think you'd be able to sit them down and say look you know the effort that you make for the dogs or the cats could you not just extend that and quite often they're the most close-minded people because yeah, in their minds they're already doing this i'm already giving my money for cat rescue i don't need to make any more changes they already think they're a good person yeah same same thing happens here with the anti-bullfighting protests it's like you can literally find uh, 20 people who have been there for 20 years protesting against bullfighting and they are vegetarians or they are not even vegetarians, which is, uh, and uh, I, I stopped uh, going to those uh, protests or I when, whenever I go, I try to veganize the people that are there protesting, but I don't join them uh, against uh, mm. bullfighting there's a there's a fox hunt here on new year's day every year which i go to although there was no protest last year and a couple of years ago so i went to the protest and standing among it was organized by i think the green party or somebody was involved at that time and there was more people than normal turned up it was about 500 people and the hunts people were gathering up and riding to the start point and a couple of them stopped and said to people, you're wearing leather shoes, you're wearing a leather jacket, what are you shouting at me for? And at that moment, I turned to the girl I was with at the time 
and I said to her, I am not standing here with these people. Like I, I, I can't, that position is not tenable. So I'm going to move away. So I ended up moving away up to the top end of the street, right mm. in among the hunts people. And afterwards I was asked why I had moved away and I told the person and I was persecuted on, <laughs> online by, oh, he thinks he's too good to stand with us and stuff. But that's not a tenable position for me to stand there where I'm standing beside somebody wearing the skin of another animal. Somebody's wearing them on their feet. Somebody's wearing them on their back. And then I'm um, supposed to be protesting people who are riding horses and and killing foxes. Now, hunting's absolutely freaking terrible, but it's no worse than what happens in a slaughterhouse in my opinion so i can't stand with those people and uh, when i tried to explain that to them they yeah. just got up it about it and like what, 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 what do you what do you think of this panel um this is a yeah kind of, i'd, I'd no, like to say something about this there's um, no pure think, land type um yeah but but, 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 but say, say say humans it's a completely different level of oppression you know um in, in People that are not vegan are actually, they're actually consuming the bodies of animals that are being slaughtered or they're consuming other products that, you know, in, 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 in terms of the people that oppress them necessitate, that oppress the other animals, necessitate the killing of other animals, right? So that's the, that would be the equivalent in human rights terms of somebody actually consuming the body of a of a human that had been um, slaughtered, it's not equivalent to consume to consuming a product of somebody that's oppressed or their conditions are bad. It's on a completely different level. If if it was the bodies of those people that were being consumed, those people were being slaughtered and then being eaten, that would be the equivalent. It's not. It's 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 not a it, it 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 there isn't an equivalence there between the two things. I think they have snuck in the word hopeless oppress hopeless in front of oppressor there, which I do not see them as hopeless oppressors. I see them as oppressors. If I seen them as hopeless, I wouldn't go onto the streets and tr and, and try and educate these people. It's like so somebody... I'm not saying you're a hopeless oppressor, therefore there's no hope for you. Go away. I'm saying you are being an oppressor. Can you please stop being an oppressor and come onto our side? So I don't like the use of the word oppressor in that sentence at all. I think it's loaded. Yeah, th this is another problem that I see with the intersectional approach that they uh, do what Cliff said at the beginning that they um, they they uh, e mm, equalize or they 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 make it appear as it as if it was as if it was equal to. Um, like any oppression is kind of equal, like a, a racial slur is equal to uh, consuming uh, the bodies and secretions of uh, hundreds of animals. Or it's it's not the same. Um, no. And to be fair, as a movement too, I mean, let's just take the hypothetical, for example, tomorrow, all slaughterhouses shut down. So quite a lot of exploited workers are now going to be out of work. Yeah, but we're the movement that's going to offer a solution going forward. It's not going to be the non-vegans that don't give a shit about them. It's going mm. to be us still. So we're, we'd be the ones that would actually give them benefit of doubt. We'd be the ones that would find them new places of work. It wouldn't be the non-vegans. They wouldn't care about them any more than they care about them now. So, I mean, yeah, you're not necessarily wrong in the sense that there's other human exploitation that continues. But as a movement, we can seek to, to solve all of that going forward but we need the power to do so mm. I, I think the other thing is it's much easier so I, I mean i'm i'm anti-capitalist uh, uh, but it's much easier to avoid animal products than it is to avoid the products of cap capitalism because capitalism mm. is ubiquitous yeah. isn't it every single thing we do it's everywhere yeah. so so you can't you kind of can't avoid um uh, purchasing uh, you know all, all workers are exploited obviously they're exploited you know at different levels of exploitation um but you can't avoid buying stuff that's been produced by exploited workers because mm. that's that's the way everything's produced yeah I would with animal that. products you can you can avoid and, and i'd say you really can fairly easily avoid consuming animal products 
to be quite I, honest. I, I'm sure I'm like you guys. I try to be eth as ethical as possible. And, and the longer I've been vegan, the more I try to be more and more ethical. I hardly buy any clothes. Uh, I want to know where things have come from. And I, I try genuinely try to live my life in as ethical a way as possible. But sometimes I am sure, I mean, here's one here. That is something people say all the time. Oh, yeah, but you're using a phone that was used. Somebody maybe exploited in a lithium mine or something or other. But, you know, simply by existing as a human being on this planet in 2023, something, and I'm sure many things I do are accidentally exploitative i i don't i can't possibly i mean i'm looking around my house and there's like dozens of things in it i'm not there's baskets here woven baskets i don't know if they were made and by yeah. somebody ethical or somebody not i walked in the furniture shop and bought a few baskets so so you could so say why, well, why you could do your research and all the rest you know exactly but the, saying, like, jesus the that we're using right now for example but yeah. the way that i look at it is who else is offering any sort of solution to any of these things yeah. except veganism? There isn't one. What what other what other social justice movement or any movement, in fact, are offering a solution to any of these things mm. long term? They're not. But so like, at least we're on the right side. We know, we understand yeah. that the it's not a vegan world. There's certain things. That, I mean, yeah, I could get rid of my phone today, but it would kind of limit my activism. So is it beneficial? Not really. But I understand, I understand the fact that it's, it's a, even if we could get to the point where there's no animal products whatsoever in the phone, you can't avoid human exploitation in lithium mines or cobalt or any of these things. We can't because it's not a non, it's a, it's a non-vegan world. But at least we are some people that are actually looking to solve these problems and correct them going forward. I don't see any of the non-vegans doing this when it comes to mm. phones, technology, whatever's in your, your screens, any of this stuff that they bring up. Where do they even care about it? That, this uh, comment, by the way, to Jeebers, and I don't even know where to start with that, strongly disagree because the, the other products I talked about, I try to be as ethical as possible. I cannot tell you. Here's a glass. I don't know who made it, where it came from, whatever. When I buy an animal product, I know for sure that somebody's been um, forcibly impregnated. Somebody's been electrocuted. Somebody's been thrown in a gas chamber. Somebody's been stabbed in the throat. Somebody's been bolt gunned in the head. This person, I don't know who you are, but you're not living on the same planet as me. You cannot possibly <laughs> equate those things because they are not the same. They, unless you're having <laughs> being taken into somewhere where somebody puts a shackle around your leg and hangs you upside down and stabs you in the throat, it is not the same. And not I, even I, comparable. I, I think let's it would make. If, let's see if this helps. Yes, that, 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 the, the other movement is they, they do require radically, um, they do reply, require less radical social changes. That's true because, you know, the oppression of other animals is more deeply entrenched and, and vastly more kind of widespread and all pervading than any oppression of human against hu human, isn't it? Mm. So it does. It, it we are our movement for animal liberation is the most radical of all movements for that reason. Again, this person's like this, um, disagrees so strongly because the the reason the other movements have so much support is because it doesn't require anybody to do freaking anything. I agree. Yeah, I'm not racist mm. by default. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. yeah I am not going. Like, and stabbing people of other races the difference with the animal one is people are actually have to make a change and people mm. don't like making a change so the, yeah, the, the other concern there is as well is and these changes make people more comfortable where they are they don't they don't they don't make them feel like you know hold account to where they are they actually make them feel more comfortable about their position and they're less likely mm. to make any more changes if they're anti-racism and they feel like they've made a few steps to correct that they're not going to be interested in going into other movements they've done their bit they can sit down now that's you know there's that there's that issue as well mm. and we see that within welfare yeah, well, yeah. Consuming, consuming animal products isn't the equivalent, isn't the same as somebody buying, um, say, an electronic product that might have been produced by workers that were exploited. Well, it would have been produced by workers that were exploited in, in, in different degrees, wouldn't it? Some some more seriously than others. Um, what consuming animal products is equivalent of is, is somebody 
um, purchasing a lampshade that, say, had been um, made by the Nazis uh, 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 from the skin of the murdered people in the concentration camp. That's that's the equivalence there. Yes. That is the equivalence. And and nobody who's against racist uh, racism or, or, or against any form of, of, of the oppression of humans would ever contemplate purchasing such a product. And that is the equivalent. It isn't to do with electronic goods or or, 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 or other stuff like that. Does anybody yeah, know, this, does this person dig in who sent these comments or are they just here to wind me up? <laughs> um, does anybody know? As far as I know, I'm talking of Nazis. Yes. Um, um, willingness to work with non-vegans on a plant-based policy is like working with Stalin to defeat the Nazis, and then it's an absolute imperative. In other words, it kind of has to be done. I mean, I, I'm I'm not totally sure what um, H.S. Ross is saying, but, but perhaps yeah, the fact that yeah, we've, I, I, we've got a more, a more difficult job, we've got a lot more people against us, um, so it's... I could, I can understand the thing about the plant-based. You see, plant-based is not the same as, as mm. vegan. V veganism is a philosophy of animal liberation. Plant-based is just um, um, an agricultural system or a diet. So you, 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 may get, you may get people thinking, yes, yeah, we need to be more plant-based. We need to consume um, fewer animal products um, for the good of the, the planet to combat climate crisis. Be because that's because that's not a vegan movement. I couldn't you know, go among if vegans, can, <laughs> if, if vegans want want to be involved in that, yeah, they 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 could work aside uh, alongside non vegans who believe in reducing the consumption of animal products because that's consistent with plant based. But plant based is not the same as vegan. And also. Uh, are we are we saying that vegans should live in the most uh, uh, like uh, humble conditions? Because uh, 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 is is Lewis Hamilton a vegan? Because he's a Formula One driver. Like, I, it, you know, like if we are gatekeeping gatekeeping people because they consume any product, uh, any kind of electronics. Are we saying that vegans should live in the most, uh, uh, like... A... I, I, I don't personally even understand that example. So you've got to work with an oppressor, to, to, with an oppressor, to bring down another oppressor. But that's why we've still got oppression. Because we this haven't tackled the not. fundamental wrong. But... We've just gone, oh, yeah, we need, we need you to do a bit of this, but over this way instead of this way. Hmm. Yeah, but... <laughs> no, one's, no one's tackled oppression. We've just used it for an advantage. That's yeah. not a solution. Yeah, my... My my point is, uh, can can, can vegans away, can vegans comment. travel? Can vegans travel overseas? Yeah, I think Lewis Hamilton would be a great example yeah. of that. Not just in terms of his job, but think about his lifestyle and all of that too. And I mean, exactly. yeah, exactly. I, 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 I think it kind of. I mean, we're probably going off the we're going off the topic now that we're. Well, could just... you put the previous one up, the political moral one? That was a very. I, I, I don't actually agree that, that most people stop with the moral reasoning. It's it, well, it's totally politically relevant. Shouldn't politics be based on morals? Sh I don't should, understand should, that comment. Shouldn't now. politics yeah, be based, based on morals? Isn't that what well, I, th I think the argument is to do with there's no pure land. Uh, I think it it's th th this is possibly trying to clarify. It's just Ross is is typing typing away as we speak, and so it's kind of like. Um, there's certain things that that need to be done, even if it's a compromise, in or, in order to stop something like the Holocaust. It says here it wasn't a mistake; the Nazis had to be defeated, and so yeah. you end up with all kind of coalitions coming together to do that, who, who, whose values are probably clashing all over the place. But then there was, there was this massive existential threat. I suppose that's what's being said. I, we're already compromising yeah. enough. Like yeah. we have to deal with people in the streets eating a hamburger every day. Like we are already we are already compromising. Um, if if they were uh, if they were doing something against humans, we could act. But uh, right now we cannot act against any any 
this, this and is animal product mm. consumption it's like yeah well the thing is they, they've only made the point that product consumption uh, we're the we're, we're the own the only movement that focuses on that and and in some some ways and i'm sure andy would agree with this given, given the film for example we've made a mistake by uh, allowing veganism to be presented as a, as a diet which would then give give that idea whereas if we presented it as a, a philosophy uh, consistently yeah. you, you see you see if we if we want to if we if we want to change the system and i i say this all the time and i said it last night we, we want to change the system we've got to change people as individuals because it's individual people are, are the voters and it's, it's the mindset of individual people that um causes them to vote in particular ways or if they become a politician it causes them to be you know whatever you know type of politician they're going to be um and if we're going to um create an animal liberationist society where animals of other animals are freed from oppression by um humans we have to we have to create a situation where a large number of people actually believe that and and where um, people are educated to believe that, and so then those people, some of those people will be, become politicians, and then there'll be a lot of uh, uh, there'll be a lot of other people who believe the same thing to vote for those politicians. So that then we have an administration that will outlaw and properly outlaw and enforce the law on um, all these different forms of animal oppression, including the consumption mm. of animal products i mean well, animal essentially products. ronnie i think we're back to the system individual thing here i've been around long enough to know that uh, asking people to make individual lifestyle changes in the face of institutional opposition is going nowhere and then made th this initial comment people are bad at making individual life lifestyle changes without institutional support and so we are we are in the kind of system well, I don't. How, how 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 is it difficult for someone? That's an assertion that. To, yeah, it's, people, it's not. It's not. It's not, it's not difficult well, for that. someone. <laughs> it's, it's, it isn't. It isn't. It, it isn't difficult for someone to adopt um, a vegan diet, and 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 um, adopting the philosophy of um, veganism isn't difficult at all because it's just understanding um, that the oppression of other animals by humans is wrong and and needs to be ended and the animals need to be liberated it's kind of not I, I don't know how it's difficult to 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 you know to change in that way to be honest it's, it's kind of not difficult it's, it's a myth i think that it's that, that it's actually difficult and 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 the the, the, the problem is is that that there that we don't have enough vegan education that's the problem you know that's why um changing that way is a lot slower than we'd like is because there's not enough vegans getting out there and doing the education and if vegans you know want animal liberation and and uh i mean know, this quite... is getting to be uh, um an argument within the the animal movement here so it's not yeah quite... yeah so it's not it, yeah so as i said before it's straying away from what we're meant to be talking yeah about. but i mean your, your answer to this one is that we we we, we won't get policy change without cultural change no, and you, you won't get, get cultural ha, change how, how like... are you going to change policy we don't have so the you, numbers to change policy yeah so you want to change the policy of this existing government what you're doing is banging your head against a brick wall it doesn't matter how many people you get in the street i gave the example yesterday about that two million people marched in london against uh, the involvement of, of of britain in the iraq war made no difference the government didn't take any notice even if it was two million people because they were they were hell-bent on a particular policy we've got a government uh, in in at the moment hell-bent on a particular ideology and it's the same with many many governments throughout the world so how so you have to you can't force change out of that government you've got to actually change the government you've got to change the constitution of the government the people that are in the governments the very nature of the administration is what you have to change if you're going to get meaningful change. And you only do that by changing people as individuals because it's the individual people who, who can become politicians and it's the individual people who are the voters. And that's the only way you, you're, you're, you're going to get any kind of radical system change. But I don't see how this person, this comment there, the, the, huge the, human the, bias here because the animals are have been commodified. I don't you know, think it has so, to do with so, human right, I'm, asking an, I'm asking an individual to 
not kill and consume somebody else. And this person saying, well, other movements don't do that. That's because other movements don't have people turning up, killing people and eating them. It's not the same thing. Yeah. Like they're so vastly different. I don't see why yeah. this person can't see it. Yeah. Vastly yeah. And I mean, different. I mean, going back to like the war, the world war example that was used and stuff like that. Obviously, um, the, the guys that formed the vegan society weren't the only people that were anti-war, right? Mm. There was loads of groups that were anti-war, but they were the only one that cared about all species to continue the vegan society after the Second World War finished. Because otherwise, all those other anti-war groups would have joined with them, right? And they didn't. Because they didn't mm. care about anything that was happening unless they, it was affecting them. And as mm. soon as that threat to them went away, they stopped caring. So that, I, I, don't, I don't think there was a solution. The actual oppression that was all around, that's why the vegan society was formed. It hadn't finished. It finished for humans, a lot of it, but it didn't stop. It continued to just move species. So like, isn't that the danger that we've got going forward? And one thing we need to remember about war is that the main, the main victims of war are, are not humans. The main victims of war are other animals. Yeah. When you have all these bombs and, and everything being dropped and um, armies invading... It, it's other animals that, that, mm -hmm. that are, are, the, are the main victims because far more of those are killed than humans. You get forests that are totally wrecked by advancing armies and all the shelling and the bombing and all that. Well, so it's, it's, long it's other animals. Too, isn't it? it's, it's, it's the, the lunacy. It, it's the lunacy of the human species in engaging in, in, in warfare instead of just getting along, right? It's the lunacy of the mm -hmm. human species. We, we, the, just instead of getting along, can, can I can I yeah. act as a chair and suggest that we come back to intersectionality? <laughs> yes. Just for, yes. Now, yeah. now, Cliff, now, Cliff, are you still okay for a few minutes? Or, yeah, or yeah. yeah, I'm good. Okay. Well, should um, well, perhaps we can get us back online if I bring bring this up, perhaps. can't tell you how many homeless people talk to me about their struggle for being uh, uh, struggle to stay vegan while they're homeless. I can't tell you how many uh, 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 I was teaching low income folks, mostly people of color. I was teaching women's studies. I always integrated the animals always. And not only did nobody object, but every semester people came up to me, made time to specifically thank me for including the animals. There is so much openness when it's done within a true understanding of how this is all connected. There is so much more openness. Uh, uh, it's almost as though we've been, the mainstream is not the majority, right? You know this, right? The so-called mainstream is not the majority. Add up all the people outside the mainstream, that's the majority. Okay, so when we target our message here, we're doing like maybe the exact opposite of what we need to do because it's the folks who are oppressed by the system who are most best able to see the intersections between their own and have the motivation to help us throw down the system. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so this is, um, this is an appeal again for Alliance Politics. And the idea is that we need to understand ourselves in a kind of intersectional way in order to bring about um, this kind of um, alliance, you know, politics that are aligned. But it, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that we can't challenge the people that we're working with, but it would mean that we'd have to work with them. And so, um, I mean, in, in political terms, Cliff, you know, it's almost like you're rather an isolationist. In, in 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 the sense that you know there's not there's not that much you will do with anyone i would identify as an anarchist if there was anything um see i listen i'm very big on language and what people say and the way that they say it and that i don't know who that was by the way but they said the word include other animals what does that mean I mean, not harm them, or think about them, or talk about them. Sometimes, what what do they mean? No, they in, the in her include? teaching, she meant in her teaching. Hmm. I mean, I think the rules seem to be different. I think the rules seem to be different when we talk about other animals, and when we what we find acceptable as vegans, and what 
there, there seems to be a, a big chasm between what we allow for human beings, which is not very much. This, all these things are not acceptable, but we'll accept it when it comes to animals. And we'll talk to you about it and we'll work with you. And like if somebody in the animal rights movement was going out and killing people of color, no, I'm this wasn't not I'm not gonna work with you. Or if they were sexually abusing women, I'd say no, I'm not working with you. So why does the same thing not apply to animals? Why do we use this loose terminology about care about animals and talk about animals and include them in the conversation you know it's the there's a disparity between how people like i'm not very good at articulating these things but it seems like we let stuff slide when it comes to animals that we don't for humans and i don't think that's right i think david would probably agree and could probably articulate yeah, yeah. that much better than me i think the same rules should apply for all because what what just happened that uh, that we that some so uh, this uh, Ross uh, this uh, this person that just just commented uh, he was uh, trying to like um, uh, compare um, buying products to uh, the animal oppression and uh, can you imagine if if we were talking about racism that that this person would would do the same critique like but 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 you are buying some products that maybe are uh, made by some exploited people somewhere else i mm. i cannot but, but but since we are talking about animals uh, people feel free to make that comparison like uh, since we are talking about non-human animals so uh, do you see my, my, my point is, is like there's always somebody trying to make vegans um, like this uh, perfect, uh, like uh, the, these uh, role models for the rest of society, while other activists for other causes uh, are not uh, accountable for any of those things that, that we have to be account accountable for. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. So like if you're vegan, you have to not be racist you don't have you can't buy any products that are made from oppression and all these add-ons whereas when we're talking about blm or some of these other movements they they don't have these add-ons just focus on your movement and yeah we're well, held to a much higher standard well i'm happy to be held to a higher standard by the way I think everybody should be held to the same high standard that we're what, what we're doing is reflecting vegan values when we're mm -hmm. also not doing that the, the fact that the fact that they're not is because they're not vegan and so mm -hmm. then you've got the job of trying to convince them to check out and um, embrace vegan philosophy uh, and i think that hs ross was kind of saying that you, you know to, to some extent i mean there's a couple of things going on but you know it it's kind of like we we are in a much more difficult position because Relatively speaking, although Ronnie didn't agree with this, we're asking them to do a lot, whereas other mo movements are not. It's almost like, you know, shower less or something, you know, th those kind of things. Where, whereas we're at, we're asking for what people in cultural species and perceive as a big change. Mm. No, no, no. I, I actually agree with that. I think we are asking for more. But well, you said we well. Have. Yeah, <laughs> but then you then you were talking about well, it's it you know in terms in terms of, of a plant diet that that you know that's that's fairly easy now. So it's not as though it's a insurmountable problem for somebody who is anti-racist to adopt a plant-based diet, even if they don't do anything else. Oh, oh yes, it's 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 it, 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 well, it, it's never been difficult to be quite honest. You know, <laughs> um, it's only that just that there's, there's there's been like far. Uh, you know, loads of processed vegan products, products suitable for vegans are on the market. But we've always had, we've always had food to, that vegans could eat for thousands and thousands of years. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. All, all right. But um, <laughs> if you go back to Patrice, then um, Colleen is saying that um, it, again, it's a, it's a question of we, we need to create more vegans in order to get what we want. I think we'll all agree with that. 
Mm -hmm. Right. The vegan movement is small. It's not very powerful. We we can't even do much about things like crop deaths, which we might do if we were a significant um, movement with socio-political power, for example. Right. So where are we going to get our recruits from? The the alliance politics argument is that we get our recruits from other movements and other people who already have similar values to us. And so this is what Colleen is saying. Patrice is saying that other oppressed individuals are very open to thinking about the oppression of other animals. It's not my perception. I mean, you go you you go to these events, and I have been to some in the past, and and try to try to talk to these pe people about animals, and it goes down like a lead balloon. I think it's seen as so. I I feel like the human or animals are the most oppressed beings on this planet. And I, I feel like I should always try and speak for them when and where I can. And I feel like well, I can speak nobody's to most arguing people, against but, you on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when you go to, say you go to, say you go to a feminist rally or an LGBTQ or Black Lives Matter, and you try to talk to people about the animals and to tell them in the nicest possible way that look, there's somebody over here that you've completely forgotten about. Not only have you forgotten about them, you're actively harming them. It's just, it's seen almost as hijacking what they're there to do. And it doesn't go down well. It never goes down well. Well, are, are you speaking out of experience? Yes. And Can you give so, us an example? Well, I've been to rallies where, where that were like BLM type things, anti-racist rallies and stuff. And I uh, will actively tr go along and try to talk to people. I will like make a sign. I've done this in the past, made a sign that's about veganism and try to uh, make it relevant to be, it being about. So, so isn't, and... isn't that the problem? Hmm. So you, you, you're not, you're not going along as an anti-racist person. You're going on as a as vegan. An to no, I'm going along as an anti-oppressor. <laughs> Yeah, I've had a. I mean, Louise and I have been to some rallies that were to do with. Um, I suppose you could do to do with social justice. Hmm. I mean, we went on um, a couple of marches in London against Donald Trump when Trump visited um, the UK, and also on maybe some austerity marches um, in the past. And kind of, you know, marches against the Tories. And we had, um, Louise was dressed as a badger in a wheelchair and had a placard saying, cull the Tories, not the badgers. And we, we had a load of leaflets about veganism, about how the way to combat the badger cull was the best way to combat the badger cull was to, to go in vegan because that was driven by the dairy industry. And in actual fact, we had quite a lot of people come up to us and say, yeah, I really like your placard and everything. And we would give them leaflets and talk to them about it. And and I found that it, it was really quite well received, sort of doing it that way. I mean, those aren't really, um, it, it, it's not something that I, I would say is a favourite thing of mine to go. It's more Louise's thing to go on big, I don't like big marches and things where there's loads of people i'd prefer to do things in the local area to educate people to go vegan probably with smaller numbers of people or just on my own but nevertheless you know we kind of turned that into you know we did manage to do some vegan outreach even at even at those events but it might have been kind of the way we approached it because we had a placard that was against the tories and so people felt kind of you know that common ground with us and they came up and we were able to talk to them and give them information about veganism i think if you're at a, i'm on the street talking to people all the time who are eating all sorts but if you're at a social justice rally or an anti-oppression rally or some of these things i don't want to curse but <laughs> so if you can be at one of these rallies and somebody will be beside you eating somebody else's dead body and i'm just like what the f what the frig <laughs> just, what the heck what the, um, yeah whatever you want to say <laughs> you know what the hell 
you can't go, go, get a, go to a burger van and buy somebody's dead body in their uh, and, and yeah. a prison rally. I'm not going to stand beside somebody and support somebody who's eating somebody else. But I think if you're in if if you're in the street or or if you you know you know campaigning in the street, there'll be people all around you there. Yeah, but I'm not lending my support to them. I am not lending my well, support. I, well, to see, I, 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 I kind of see it more as lending support to the actual, you know, campaign to, to actually being opposed to the same thing as they're opposed mm. to or being for the same thing. Well, the, 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 the reason to be there in the first place. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's I, because... You know, like the Donald Trump rally, we were there because we don't like Donald Trump, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, well, <laughs> not not. Well, well, Sorry, go one ahead, question I'd, li I'd like to raise, if if if, if we could perhaps, is and I and I, I think um, Andy wants to speak on this. Is is the fact that what about all the people in our movement that are doing harmful things? And uh, um, you know, do do we, you know. Interact with them in order to to educate them uh, as well, because I mean, you know, if you're talking about you know vegan strategists who are suggesting that um, you know vegans can um, you know people can be vegan if they eat fishes and eggs uh, and and this this kind of stuff. Now, now, now these these are people who have got credibility within the vegan movement. Now it seems to me that they're damaging. Who's that? You know uh, the, the the vegan movement in, incredibly, uh, yeah. and you know, I suppose we'd have the same. Well, we we would want to work with them. Is we, we've got to do something ab about it? I suppose. I've only yeah, come across. I mean, I think I think people like without without naming names. He, he's a great example of a problem. And I mean, you, we, let's take intersectionality out of it for a moment. Let's say this weekend the RSPCA are doing an anti-cruelty march. How successful do you think you're going to go? Be there and talk about veganism. You think you're going to have far more success than turning up to a random BLM? Rap? No, you're not. Because most of those people are not going to change their minds for exactly the same reason. And that's got nothing to do with intersectionality. That's because people are completely locked in their viewpoint. And they think it's very easy for me to be against, and, uh, to be against cruelty in their minds. Because it just means not kicking a dog. They don't think about products. Them not kicking a cat or them not doing something excessive is them already not being cruel and this is the problem with a lot of these people that attend the, the thing they're not victims of this oppression it's just a day out for them they don't mm. even care about the cause and they're not there for the cause it doesn't really bother them they're just sitting on social media and they want to be there for the day and th this extends all over the place mm -hmm. how, how, and for me that's not a bigger problem than people that have got a platform within the movement that are being listened to day in day out that are literally diluted everything that we stand for because those people who don't agree with us they're not a threat they're not part of us but they're not a threat to everything we stand for in, in, the, in the sense that they're not diluting our message they just don't want to be part of our movement these people are part of our movement already what, and we don't address that. I mean, I mentioned him earlier, but like George Martin has wrote numerous things about intersectionality, challenged him loads of times why he hasn't got a problem with welfareists. Are they not a problem? Because I think they are a bigger problem, personally. I think the dilution within the movement is worse than the dilution outside of it because those people don't care. And we expect that. These people supposedly do. That's concerning. Yeah, I mean, how much damage did um, Alex O'Connor cause our movement? Perfect example. How much damage has James Astley caused the movement? You know, these people, for the most part, have just been like, don't worry, he's vegan, so he gets to get out of jail free card. Shouldn't do. Should actually be held to account far higher than any non vegan for exactly the reasons we've mentioned. If we can't work with people because they're non vegan and they're oppressors, then I'm sorry, but James Astley's an oppressor and he should know better. But we don't, we don't, we don't hold them to that account. They get to get out of jail free card. So personally, I think these are bigger, more damaging things to the movement than intersectionality is. But we don't talk about it, or if we do, it's in defence of. But sometimes uh, they, they are like the same people that, that support inter intersectionality. What about a cranky vegan or human Hancock? They're they they're they are like not well. We should stop telling people that veganism is a moral baseline. They say that. Yeah. And then, well, well, DXE, DXE say that, too. don't they? DXE say that. I mean, they, they wrote they wrote a, a pamphlet called Boycott Veganism when Sean wrote it. Oh. What about the uh, safe movement that, that they uh, they do vigils for the slaughterhouse workers? 
that intersectionality is a problem as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in terms of the movement, we've got we've got some serious problems and um, big ones that don't get talked about enough. We talk about the things that the non-vegans are doing, but they're all obvious. Hmm. I, I, I'd probably disagree with you. And I know George and I know James, both of them personally. And I, I don't you know, really James, wicked. Do you want to get him to give some money back to some of me and my friends? Then <laughs> give us a contact address. I'm not. I'm. I'm not joking. Like seriously, but that's got, he wants absolutely. that reputation, and he needs to, to yeah, be get responsible you. for I, the things he did to people. I get it, but again, that's got nothing to do with non-human animals. No, no, but I'm, I'm just saying I, I, I understand your point. Platform that's depressed others, taken money from them, exploited them, and used his reputation to do that and never mm. been held to account. I think that's 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 worse than someone turning up to a protest and eating a bacon sandwich person. I don't. He already apparently knows better. Don't even, they don't, they don't. That's the problem with dealing with their ignorance. He apparently knows better. Yeah, but the person eating the bacon sandwich has had somebody thrown in their gas chamber. It's not yeah, in but what I'm remotely saying is comparable. Their ignorance, their speciesism, their disconnection. He's someone that apparently knows better than all those things, has connected, does know that oppression's wrong, does know that exploitation's wrong, does know all these things and still does it. Hmm. I, I, I'm not saying, I'm not saying I agree with the, I think it was money for some green company or something. I didn't re really read a lot into it, but I don't think it's even comparable to ask people to donate money for whatever and having thrown us throwing somebody in their gas chamber is like well so if, if, we, if we take the case of like, um of the skeptic uh ve you know vegan skeptic cosmic, um, skeptic. cosmic skeptic that's the way mm -hmm. yeah the non-vegan skeptic um you see i mean be because because he's spent the last three years i mean he's, he's been vegan about three and a half years before before he he decided that that he wasn't. Although I know that you uh, you came up with an interesting film, Andy. But you know he's he's been systematically um, reducing the meaning of veganism hmm. throughout his entire time. Not to mention rejecting the theory and the philosophy of animal rights. And so that's going to have an effect on other animals because it means that people are going to go, oh well, free range, oh well, welfare. And, and this this kind of stuff, and there's a heck of a lot of that in 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 this movement. We don't have an animal rights movement; we have an animal welfare movement that calls itself animal rights, and we have a a, a lot of strategists and people people like Tobias Leonard and people like uh, Alex O'Connor, who and even Earthling Ed, who, who who says that veganism is about reducing suffering to its greatest extent, which it's not. Right. And um, I mean, David, you've actually got a slide ab about that, I believe. But, yeah, you know, so I mean, the, these these are problems um, within the movement. And and as Andy said, the real problem is that they are in the movement or they're regarded as being in the, in the movement. They're doing a heck of a lot of damage uh, to us. But that's a lot to do with utility as well. I don't I don't think you can be a utilitarian and, and be animal rights. Those two things are not. But our main philosophy is utilitarian. No, it's not. It is. No, it's not. It is. Go for it. Thanks. Tell me. It. Well, <laughs> who's the philosopher of the animal rights movement? Peter Singer. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but I mean that, that's a huge damage to most people. If you think that you can ethically use animals, then that's that goes against veganism. But that is the philosophy that most people adhere to. Well, not me. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, I'm sure not any of us five, but we're, we're talking no, no. About I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, we're, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, it's like with um, Melanie Joy telling people that you can get eggs and dairy without violence, right? And then Peter Singer saying he hasn't got a moral argument against free-range egg production. Now, yeah, Peter did he Singer, not say recently he regrets say, making the book about animal rights or something like. That. He's yeah, he, he, he regrets framing in terms of of rights because he's not a, a rightist, mm. and so. Oops, my screen just went blank. Um, and so we had a, a, a problem in the sense that uh, he was bitterly opposed to people calling him animal rights. But then you've got people like Peter who insist on calling him animal rights. So Peter, ethical tr treatment of animals, not Peter Singer. So Peter, ethical treatment, call Peter Singer animal rights. And they say about animal liberation, which is not an animal rights book, if you only buy one animal rights book in 
uh, in your life, then it's got to be this one, which is actually going against the 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 express wishes of the person who wrote the book, right? And so our 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 main philosophy, and this is, I mean, just just look look at what Francione says. Our main philosophy in this movement is utilitarian, because our main philosopher, and sold by all the groups, Animal Aid, uh, Peter, is animal liberation. There's going to be a hell of a a celebration about animal liberation in the coming months because it's coming up to an, an anniversary. You watch how the and animal it's rights movement released with a tour. Yeah, you watch how the animal rights movement get on, on board with that. The, uh, I'm going to say something controversial now. So, the only person who I have ever heard put an animal rights succinctly as I see it, and yes, you, I know you're going to say to me, Roger, some of the other things this person said are problematic, and I agree with you. But the way he placed uh -oh. animal rights and said it succinctly is Gary Yurovsky. It could not have been put any better. And that's why I asked people to watch that speech. Now, yes, I, I agree with you. Some of the other things he has said is are problematic. But when it comes to animal rights, I think he nailed it on the head. At, at least the moral obligation was clear with uh, Gary Yurovsky. Yeah. The moral obligation was there. But when we have uh, people like uh, Humane Hancock and uh, all these, uh, well, I think joy. it's pretty clear with um, Tom Reagan, don't you, David? Yeah. I would agree, Reagan too, yeah. But there's not too much of his, you know, it's harder to find. And unfortunately, it's from a, a time ago. One of you, the reason I don't ask people to go and watch that is even the Yurovsky one looks dated now. I'm trying to, I want people to watch something that they can actually grasp. The longest section I've seen with Reagan, I'm not sure where he's making the speech. It looks like a university campus in America, but it's like it's like old 4-3 grainy format online. It's really, you know, would somebody, really, you know what it's like these days with picture quality, sound quality. The message is great. I have nothing to say. His message is great. It's just such a shame that it's like from yeah, I think, I almost think from another time. Justice there. Well, that's, that's kind of one of the worst ones quality-wise, isn't it, Andy? So. Yes. Absolutely, I mean, yeah. The sort of justice is well, it is what it is. Um, so some of them, if you're interested, I have enhanced a couple of those speeches and I've got a okay. playlist on YouTube. I shared it this morning, in fact, on my Facebook. So, not all of them, I haven't got through all of them yet, but some of them have been it and they're far more watchable because I totally okay. agree. I totally agree. I mean, I've noticed it loads of times that people will click on something and it's like, I'm not watching that, it's crap quality. Um, mm. So, yeah, that, that's exactly why I enhanced some of them. The audio on all of them is far better, the visuals. Uh, apparently the the click thing audio is king for people so it doesn't really picture quality obviously too but if the audio is bad people will not stick yeah, around yeah abs absolutely the audio on all of them is much improved yeah they are now yeah. listenable especially if you wanted to download it and say listen to it it's like a podcast that would work fine yeah tom tom has just seen um the um i mean this was this was remarkable because um reagan took part in a debate 1989 which tom is alluding to here uh the audience for it was a million people it was on the it was on the bbc and the the animal rights side of it won the debate as well and i thought for many many years i mean talking about uh you know more than 20 years i thought the full thing had been lost i used to used to have a cassette of it and then i don't know what happened to it but it, it went and then about what two months ago, Andy, you discovered it, right? Yeah, end of that, I think. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't <laughs> believe it when when you goes, hey, guess what I found? I, you know, almost fell off my chair, and because I mean, this is really interesting, not because of just what Reagan says, but because of the audience. The audience couldn't understand animal rights, but they couldn't understand animal welfare. It, the audience were reacting like we get reactions from the public, it, so it's it's all it's almost like um. You know, it gives you a kind of encapsulation of, of our problem. Here's here's somebody presenting a rights based position. You get a lot of people wanted to translate it to welfare because that's all, the only thing they understand, which is the same with politicians. So it, it's really kind of fascinating, uh, just on that sense. It it it, it is dated looking. So the, the only thing you can do about that is okay. Well, it's a historical document. So you know, in that sense, what's wrong with it? And um, luckily, in terms of what Andy's doing in terms of enhancements, it's the audio that you can improve the, the most, isn't it? 
rather than the yeah, visual. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, Cl- yeah, and Cliff, yeah. you're saying that's the most important part, so that's mm-hmm. good. Apparently yeah, not, that's, that's not my opinion. That is fact. Sorry, the, yeah. the thing about some of these as well is there's only one or two I think where he actually uses slides. So the vast majority of him, you can just listen to the audio and you're not missing anything at all except him walking left and right on the stage. It's not like you're missing the information because there isn't any he's just talking about it. So for the most part, they are just fine to chuck on as a podcast or to walk around and listen to. Right. Okay. So we've been, uh, we've come up to two hours. So um, we haven't gone through the slides at all. Do we want to, <laughs> or do we want to say we've had enough? Oh, I need to go and do a couple of things, guys. So. Can save them for next week if you want, and then we know. Really like <laughs> no, 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 no! Don't do this to me! Don't do this to me! <laughs> Can I just add on at the end? I was looking, I was looking up there who said the quote because I was saying I disagree with Stephen Best's politics earlier, but I don't know if you. I'm sure you all do know the quote uh, where he succinctly described what rights should animals have. The one where he says, if they have wings, they should be able to fly. If they have legs, they should be able to run. It's one of the greatest quotes. I save it on my phone the whole time. Something I refer to all the time. And I think he put animal rights succinctly in one paragraph, absolutely perfectly. So I encourage anybody who's watching to look that one up. Who are we talking about again? Stephen Best. All right. Okay. Yeah, well, Best has got some pretty decent... um, I mean, he's changed over the years. He's, he's kind of mellowed now. He, he was, he was he a little to. bit. He was banned yeah. from half the world, wasn't he, at one stage? Yeah, well, there's he, been a he few people. Only speak in Luxembourg, I think. It was the only country that would let him. Yeah. What was he banned for? Was uh, he? I'm, I'm guessing similar things as Gary Orofsky. In terms yeah, I think so. That his opinion is not, <coughs> not wanted or accepted in certain places. Yeah, I don't actually know, to be honest. I just know he wasn't. Are, are you banned from people. anywhere, Ronnie? Am I banned from anywhere? Yeah. Well, the United States of America or Australia, probably quite a number of other countries. You're not allowed to go, no, because of the no, United no, States. because of my uh, so-called criminal convictions. Is, is Are you that serious? Is that, is that no, I, but not that I want to go to either of those countries anyway. That's mad, so it don't make any difference. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I was due, I was due to go to the states this is years and years ago when I was when I was doing the university stuff. And I got, I got, I got permission for a visa, but it w- was an issue for them. But I think it's because my sentence was lower than yours, I suppose. Well, no, there, there was, there was, there was a no. There was a guy um, in my the, the first time I got arrested. There was two of us got sent to jail. There was a third guy who got a suspended sentence because he'd done rather less than it, than 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 and myself and 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 the other guy, and. Um, uh, He'd been going to the USA regularly as part of his job and getting a visa for that. And what apparently one of the questions they ask on the on the application form is, "Have you have you been convicted of an offence of moral turpitude?" Certainly, that was what it said at the time. And he thought that that was probably some kind of like to do with child molestation or something. So he will he was put no. And uh, he, he got these visas for his work, but he, um, on, on one of his um, visits to, after you know quite a few years, on one of his visits to the States, he met a woman over there and, um, you know, they, they got on really well. And um, in the end, they, they decided to get married. So he was going to go over there to get married. And so because it was a, a personal thing rather than a work thing, they they kind of looked at his visa application again in more depth and found out about his conviction and his suspended sentence and refused the visa because apparently moral turpitude virtually covered any criminal offence. Yeah, well, it's on the screen there. It says, yeah. Um, yeah. It says de- deprived or wicked behaviour or character. Yeah, yeah. So, so he had to employ a really expensive lawyer. There was this lawyer because, of course, a lot of, of, of you know, the, the rock bands that were going over to the USA from here to play. There was quite a few people in those bands would have. You they know, were full of turpitude. They're full of drug offense, you know, drug offenses and stuff. You see, so they employed this really expensive lawyer to argue their case to get them the visa. And he had to employ the same lawyer, cost him thousands of pounds 
to employ the same lawyer to argue his case. And he eventually did get the visa and he's, he got married and he's now living in the States. But, uh, you know, that's it. So, so going on, on his, uh, <laughs> unless you can afford the expensive lawyer, Roger, mm. you, I don't think you'd be allowed in because you actually, his was only a suspended sentence. You're not allowed in, but apparently you can stand for president if you've done yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's mad, isn't it? <laughs> he'll, he'll be running the country from the prison cell, probably. Um, yeah. Um, so, so, so yes, but I, I mean, there's probably other places I've been from as well, to be honest. Um, I haven't really checked, but I know Australia. And it's, it's strange that I'd be banned from Australia, seeing it, it was mostly... It's full people, of criminals in the first place. It was, yeah, it yeah. was people convicted of criminal offences that were transported to Australia, weren't they? And now, like, you're not allowed in. So it's gone. <laughs> it's gone true, away. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, they're they're right up to here with turpitudeness. That's why there's too much turpitude there without yeah. me going with my turpitude. I suppose. I thought I thought turpitude was something you clean your pin brushes with. To be honest, I've never heard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've never heard that word before. I thought it was um, something you used to thin paint, isn't it? That's turpentine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, I, need, um, I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay well does anybody want to make a final statement um i mean if you need to go cliff just just uh no no yeah. i'll wait to the end i'm, I'm not oh, okay you just you're just dying to see that end end bit aren't you i'm enjoying the, the conversation music? but i do need it <laughs> <laughs> so i don't want you talking any... about me ever go <laughs> yeah yeah go on cliff you you go and, and we'll stay on for 10 minutes <laughs> all right <laughs> you can talk about me now right i actually i'm gonna go because i have things to do so guys i really enjoyed this chat so thank you yeah, very thank much you. Sorry about being for nice. hosting it and everybody taking part and everybody watching so have a good evening guys okay Cliff, take care See ya. Take care, Cliff. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. right people do we want to just go then or what uh because i suppose we've we've said our pieces um do, do you want to make a, a a final statement or anything david or are you are you satisfied or full of turpitude and you, you're muted? <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I hadn't noticed. Uh, yeah, sometimes uh, welfareism and intersectionality intersect <laughs> and uh, they they are part of the same um, of the same mentality that we sh we have to um, we have to weaken our message and we have to strip veganism of the moral imperative that, that it has. So I, I I think both are problematic for the movement. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't get that because um, we, we don't we don't weaken our movement, even if we're in alliances with with others. That, that's that's not what it's about. The, the alliance comes together because there's something that they all agree on, but they all reserve the right to maintain their own claims making. And, but, uh, and but, uh, so I mean, I mean, don't have sometimes, and sometimes representatives of the of the of the thought, pro intersectionals or, or or people who identify as intersectionals, do that. Like uh, they 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 want to uh, weaken the message so that we can include more people. In the, yeah, but uh, I mean, the, pe the people who are weakening the vegan message most are groups like Peter and Unmalade. Because it's it's even part of social movement theories, not, not to do with intersectional but, but but what about when Angela Davis says that you you don't have to be a vegan, or when when Afco says you don't have to be a vegan to speak for animal rights? That that's completely. I, I don't think I don't think she said that. Honestly, I don't think she said that. She was talking about people within the uh, the Black Liberation Movement uh, incorporating thinking about other animals in, into their theory she was encouraging that and and she she was she was saying what we've got to do is get over the idea that oh well i'm not an animal rights person so i can't talk about the animals and she's saying all liber all liberation groups or a vegan doing... or a Sorry? vegan she said she said that or a vegan you don't have to be a vegan um what afco yeah that that, in... that she she what I understood was that she sees a problem with people saying that you have to be a vegan or an animal rights activist to to speak in favor of the animals. No, she was. So, she, I, I think I think 
I know I know what you're saying, and I I I I, I think I know what, where, as it were, that's coming from. But I don't actually think she's saying that in that clip. I think she's talking about um, the uh, BLM, and she's talking about the um, uh, the Black Liberation Movement, and she and she's talking about how they should incorporate um, kind of ethical thinking about other animals in into what they already do. It doesn't mean that they've got to stray from their lane in the same ways that we don't. It's just that they should incorporate. Uh, so, I mean, I think she, she was actually saying something very good. You know, you, you, you should think about animal ethics as well as racial issues. The, the, yes, yeah, she, she said that afterwards. But the, the first thing she says is like, well, people shouldn't think that the, the, they have to be vegans or animal rights activists uh, to to speak um yeah within their own movement, the to, talk, to talk about other animals in their own movement that's right that's what she was saying she was saying that if you're in if you're in another movement you don't you don't have to be a vegan or an animal rights person to raise the issue the ethical issue of other animals within your movement which right? is kind of the idea that the uh, melanie joy has with uh, the vegan allies um kind of a concept that that well there are people who are not vegan but that, that they're doing something for the animals and and i think that that weakens the whole uh, message but it's it's not a it's not a vegan message you, you the the idea was just to encourage them then, then it's a welfareist message but that's why no, she no, talks but... about factory farming yeah you can you can speak against factory farming and angela davis that does, does the same which is my point she, they, 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 they just, uh, they just talk about animal cruelty. Of course, uh, yeah. Well, you don't have to be a vegan to well, be animal, a... animal equality. The group just talk about factory farming all the time. They've, they've, they've also spent millions of dollars on welfare campaigns. But I mean, they're supposed to be vegans. I mean, this no, is this is. I don't this think is... So. Well, uh, but uh, do do they do they check that people are vegan? Well, or, I don't know. It's I. My my point is that all these people that that are trying to um, make the, uh, the the vegan movement um, a movement that speaks against other kinds of, of oppressions are weakening the vegan message in general. Well, first of all, Afco wasn't talking about the vegan movement. She was talking about uh, the Black Liberation movement, and in relation, going back to uh, where we all started with the um, Angela Davis, what she said was accurate. I still disagree because it's it's not that like. What is the message for the people out there uh, listening to her? It, it is that that, that uh, you you just uh, don't need to be a, a vegan to oppose animal oppression, because you can be an anti-capitalist. And uh, what what she was interested in was the idea of uh, opposing capitalism, and uh, that uh, the idea that capitalism is to blame for animal oppression. Well, it doesn't it doesn't help. You've got to admit. Uh, like uh, the whole idea of Angela Davis saying that well, you don't have to be a vegan to speak against animal oppression. Uh, a systematic animal oppression. She, she didn't that? say that, David. She said animal abuse. Oh, okay, yeah, systematic animal abuse. Yeah. Um, yeah. The whole point that if if people um, listen to her, if non-vegans listen to her, is like, okay, well, yeah, yeah. If I oppose capitalism, then I'm uh, part of the solution for animals, and that's weakening the vegan message. It's it's stripping the vegan message from uh, the, the the moral imperative, the, the moral obligation that, that people have to go vegan. I, I'm not quite sure she was giving a, a vegan message. She was saying that you don't have to be a vegan to oppose animal abuse. Most people in this world who oppose animal abuse uh, are not vegan. Uh, th th then we have to again come back to the. Uh, definition of abuse because uh, to me abuse is whatever you call abuse 
what when done onto humans and that entails all animal exploitation yeah yeah but i suppose the way that we have to look at it to be fair is i don't i don't know what the equivalent of the rspca is in colombia but what would their sort of um, branding say like in, in england the rspca are anti-cruelty right but their definition of cruelty and our definition of cruelty are not the same thing their cruelty is excess harm that goes after all of these things that we have to do to get from point A to point B. So a cow being, for example, artificially inseminated or dehorned, all of those things are necessary to milk them, right? But if they mm -hmm. kick the cow between, say, I don't know, farm and transportation, that's unnecessary. That's, that's cruelty then. That's the first time that cruelty's come into the equation because they use a completely different definition. And, and I, I mean, I'm totally with you. Our definition as a group is of abuse. It's very different to the general public's definition. That's the issue that we have. And the general they're, public they're are in public. line with the RSPCA. Yes. But the, the, the RSPCA's version of cruelty is the same as the general public's. It's not the same as ours, which is excess harm, which is why most people use the example, which to be honest, doesn't always help when they go, what about if you saw someone kicking a dog in the street? It's excessive. It's not, it's not use. It's cruelty. It's above and beyond that use which we consider normal. But how can you say that you're against animal abuse and uh, while, while participating in, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, dairy consumption, for example? Because they how don't see the that? abuse, you see. They've had that, that normalised to this extent. And it's only, like I said, well, it's only when they've got a photograph of a farmer being exceedingly cruel that they see abuse. A cow being milked is not abuse in their own, even though we know it is, we absolutely know it is, in their mind, as long as it's, there's no excessive harm or excessive cruelty, there isn't any. And that's what they play on. That's what we're trying to, that's what we're up against. That's the problem. So and at that's... that base level, a sentence of most people are against systematic animal abuse. That is true. It is true as a statement in the same way that most yeah. people are against systematic racism. It doesn't mean we haven't got racist but, but, people. But, 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 it, it, people it is true. It, it, it's, it's a true because, statement. It's just, uh, it's well, like, just lip service to, to, to me. Like it's just lip service for them. It's a, it, yeah. I'm against I'm against animal abuse, and they they see all these trucks on the on the you know on the the highways, all these these trucks being full of animal uh, animals that have been abused. They 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 they, they it's like just they they want to they want to say that they're against animal abuse, but that they are not. They say they're against it, but in actual, it's like the thing about Nation of Animal Lovers, isn't it? That no, they, they that, are against it in their own terms. It's the, they're it's against we, it in their own terms. We, but we, but it, we've got a minority definition of that word, which doesn't chime with the culture, doesn't chime with the public, doesn't chime with the RSPCA. We're the ones out of step, not them. But we are, we are the ones that should be trying to um, oh yeah 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 that's that, that's that, that's that not people interesting understand. at all no no i agree with that yeah of course yeah i mean there's there's not even a question that we we're we're trying to get them to 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 see what they do as a rights violation you know my argument is let's step outside of the of the welfare paradigm and not use their word let's use another word I abuse. think abuse. Uh, I think abuse is even a better term because if we think of in human, in human context, uh, in the human context, abuse would be something like um, I don't know, like uh, using using one person for one specific objective without that person knowing. I think that 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 person would say, "Well, you used me. You used me for that." Yeah, you, 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 you used me to get to, I don't know, to, for example, if somebody wants to achieve uh, some sort of a, um, position in a, in, a, in a company, for example, and that they use another person to get to the point where, where they can achieve that, and, and, and that, all, that other person realizes that they they are being they are being used for that purpose then uh, that person might might say well you used me that's abusive abusive behavior on your part but the, but you know like the term abuse should be 
more general than 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 just animal cruelty, which, which is uh, which is uh, completely different, because that's violent. That, that's uh, it means something else. But abuse is is a more general term that should be should should include everything that is included in animal farming. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we'll all agree with you when you use the word should be, but it's not at the moment. Um, and so, as you say, we need to bring about that change. Okay. But in terms of, of in terms of the state, the actual physical statement that she said, it, it's accurate in terms of the public, the culture and the RSPCA. It's not accurate to vegans. But it's, it's, I mean, like we could say, we could say now all th four of us could say, and in fact, um, I think uh, that this one is, she wasn't saying you shouldn't be a vegan. She was saying you don't have to be. And, and that, so that's what makes it an accurate statement. But, but it, it, it happens the same with the term exploitation. Most people don't, don't even understand what the term exploitation in vegan in the vegan context means. Well, uh, and we have the, 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 it's our job. It's our job it, as it animal is, rights. I, I agree with that. I, I my mm. own, my entire position on that is that I just like to stand outside of the welfare paradigm to have my conversation, because I think it's it's clearer, it's more consistent, and you don't have to then have big arguments about i mean we've got an example of that when um cliff with his with his um the, the woman in um belfast who was deadly against animal abuse until cliff started talking about so-called food animals and then mm -hmm. and then she she kind of lost it a, a little bit mm -hmm. because she doesn't see herself as an animal abuser mm -hmm. and the rspca wouldn't think of her as an animal abuser either. But yeah. Cliff did because he's coming from a vegan point of view. Yeah, Cl Cliff is trying to do what we should do. That's yeah, no, I mean, I understand uh, that. I mean, but I mean, to go back to where we started this last week, like I understand we all are in agreement what cruelty really means, that any use is cruel. That's that's fact. But most people's perception, but like, oh, you can't get to cruelty, say, without use. Like they, there's kind of very few examples. So we understand this, but to most people, cruelty is something different than use. Cruelty is something excessive. Cruelty is why I choose not for most part to use the word. If someone else brings it up and I already know their interpretation of it, I'll use it. But if I'm expecting to challenge their interpretation of the word, we're going to come into problems. And this is why I purposely don't use words like harmer when I speak to a farmer, because we're not bridging a gap here. We're, we're causing divide. If I, if I know that this word is not, they interpret it in the same way that I am, we're not going to have a conversation. That's not going to work. And I, it's the same with cruelty. So if they bring it up and they give me what they interpret it as, I can, I can challenge that, absolutely. But I don't bring the word up first because I know that their interpretation of it will completely be different than mine. And I want to get away from cruelty, whereas all they'll be thinking of is, well, I go free range, so there's no cruelty involved. Because I don't think about use. Whereas if they bring up and say, I've done this, and this is how I see cruelty, I can challenge that. But if I bring it up first, they've got to challenge me and they don't want to, they'll walk away. They don't care. That's the problem. That you can challenge their definitions, their interpretations of words, but they're not interested in that words. And we're kind of accept, expecting them to already be on the same wavelength as us. And they're not. That's why they're non-vegan. So I suppose that's something we've got We've got to bridge. Because yeah, I'm not we're... against using any words. I'm, I, they, I just think that they need to be backed up. I'm not against use. I'm not against abuse. I'm not against cruelty in, in the right context. But I don't purposely say to someone, are you against animal cruelty? Because I fully expect them to say yes, because they don't class any of their use as cruelty. They're thinking in their minds, I don't kick dogs, I don't kick cats, I don't beat up swans for no reason, I'm not cruel. That's all that they're thinking about. And that's 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 social normalisation that we've got to break. It's a lot bigger than just one conversation, sadly. But, but indeed, abuse is different from cruelty. I, I just uh, understand mm -hmm. that very differently. Cruelty involves violence and, and like really... Um, explicit violence um, and uh, but if you look at the actual uh, definition it just talks about use of another at the end of the day it still qualifies you can also be cruel example. by omission can't you by starvation mm. is seen as cruel that's not that's not um 
kind of well, the infliction of violence. Mm. Okay, Ab okay. Abuse is immoral use, and and all use of animals is immoral. Yeah. So all mm -hmm. use of other all use of other animals is therefore abuse. Yeah, I agree with Ronnie. From a vegan point of view, yeah, I agree, Ronnie, but not the RSPCA or the culture or the public. But but, but it's our job to to make people it's understand. Our job to reclaim agree, the agree. word, isn't it? I think. Yeah, I I, yeah. I agree. I agree with that. But it, it doesn't change. It doesn't change the fact that although we all agree on that and we've got a job to do and all that, it doesn't. It doesn't change the fact that what Angela Davis said was technically correct. She, she's she's worrying she's worrying down the concept. She's she's. Uh, it, it, she, it depends whether it's she's normalizing she's normalizing the term abuse to mean cruelty. Yeah, it and depends it, whether it's subjective or objective. In other words, if if what she meant is that, you know, you, um, it, in other words, you, you don't have to be vegan to think that you're opposed to animal abuse that would be more accurate but in objective terms it isn't true in objective mm -hmm. terms it's not true mm -hmm. yeah you can agree with that yeah uh, this is it i mean they, they're, they're hypocrites of course they are but they can still hold that view and most people do like if it, as I said, the easiest way to do it would be to walk down the street with a clipboard and just ask everyone individually, are you against the systematic abuse of animals? Who's going to say no? Seriously. But, but, but it's like uh, in, ter in, in times of uh, the, the Nazis, uh, they would say that they, I'm, I'm not an assassin. I, I'm, not, I'm not a, you know, I like, uh, I'm not a murderer because I, I, I killed someone who is not included in the definition of murder that that's one of the problems because uh, you know like no, if, if, murder, if they killed it? if they mm -hmm. killed someone uh, from a different race uh, that it, it was not murder well it was enshrined in their law i mean nazi law made made the killing of jews um, a good thing. In fact, it was um, the brilliant book by uh, Zygmunt Bauman called uh, Modernity and the Holocaust. And th they actually constructed the Holocaust to mean almost like kind of ethnic cleansing or, or kind of even vermin control. This is all part, all part and parcel, parcel of, of, of what was going on. But I mean, obviously, we wouldn't agree that what's legal and what's more, th those are two different things, right? And so you know, I mean, some some people would suggest that you judge morality on what's legal or not, right? I had a conversation with with somebody years ago who, um, because they found out that um, bestiality or interspecies sexual assault, as it's sometimes called by criminologists, were legal in her state, and um, mm -hmm. she she thought that the only thing she could do because she couldn't campaign against it because it was it was moral because it was legal she she thought that she'd have to move state right mm -hmm. uh, question for you andy um how do you start a conversation with a non-vegan in what regard yeah uh, i mean my dad what what non-vegan what context I think I understand the context that, that that it's difficult to to start a conversation without talking about animal cruelty or animal um, what, what is obvious to much to to to, um, to uh, most people most people uh, well well say that was true it's a question then of moving them from there quickly isn't it we, mm -hmm. if if it's got to be that you've got to start there say it was. I'm not necessarily that I agree with that, but say say it was, then then you would move them from that. So you're saying in, if you were doing street outreach, uh, Andy, if I was in the street, what with a with an vegan, I'd, I'd I'd ask them what how how that do they do they see animal cruelty as something that the RSPCA prevent, for example, because the RSPCA will stamp. All, all of these things that we're against, they'll stamp them. So if they genuinely believe that the RSPCA are there to prevent cruelty, what's their definition of cruelty? That's a good place to start. Because 
They know, they know, regardless of whether we talk about treatment, they know that to get steak on their plate, an alive cow becomes a dead cow. And they know this. This is not up for debate. They know this. But they're taking cruelty out of the equation already because they're told that it's been prevented. So I want to know where they think cruelty is. But I don't start conversations about cruelty. I normally start, I mean, at the end of the day, if none vegan in the street, they've usually come over to me. So I'm taking what they've said first. I think a lot of these are case by case basis. I like to know what language they're already using. I like to know where they already are. And I, I think I think it's really hard to just say how would you start a random conversation with a random person? Because I mean, if, if I'm doing outreach, they've nine times out of ten come over to me and already made a comment that's already started the conversation, and I'm responding to that. But cruelty does come up, yeah. But this, this is what I'm saying. I'm not against these words. We've we've got to correct this, and that's a great way of doing it. Ask them what their definition of cruelty is. Ask them what they think the RSPCA are doing to prevent it, if that's the case. Um, HS Ross, yeah, you see yeah, I, I've, I've got something to say. I know, yeah, I've got you do, but I mean, obviously, yeah. the, the the answer to that is the fact that there's not been enough. Absolutely, yeah, I, 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 absolutely. I mean, I mean, compared with the problem, there's a minute amount of of outreach going on. Well, you see, you see, um, the the reason meat consumption is. Um, going up rapidly i mean if we carry on the way we are i think we'll probably have double the consumption of animal products in 40 years or something i think there's been some figures worked out but that 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 is a that means we need more vegan outreach doesn't mean it's not working we need far more vegans to be involved in outreach and you see i think you know okay so um the reason it's um it's going up so much in poorer countries is because um people there associate the eating of meat with status because in those countries it was, it was always the, the rich that ate the meat and the poor people couldn't afford to eat it so now that the it's the the, the meat is much more cheaply produced probably because of factory farming poorer people can afford it and so they you know they snap it up because they see that as a kind of status thing um but if it wasn't for the amount, if if it wasn't for the amount of re outreach that's going on at the moment, even even though that's totally inadequate, um, the amount of animal products consumed would be even greater than than they actually are. So I think all all, all, all that's happening really at the moment with outreach is is it's just making things um, not as bad as they otherwise would be. But if we're going to turn the situation around, we need uh, a lot more outreach and. You're absolutely right, Roger. It's the, the problem is there's not enough outreach. That's that's, uh, and that's what we we need to try to do something about. And also population growth, and also the economic growth of India and China. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, I really like what Andy does on TikTok because that's uh, I, I think it's a way a much more effective uh, way of doing outreach than uh, street outreach. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm limited can... now in terms of my son moving in, but I actually feel much better doing it like that too. Yes, because you've got more control over the situation. And I can I can come back with as much as or as little as I need to. No, no, I prefer that. And you have more reach. Uh, like uh, I'm doing uh, um, outreach with uh, some sometimes with some uh, a group of uh, people from Spain. And there's a girl. Yeah, I, I have tried does. to listen to some of your lives. I mean, I wish there was an auto translate, but and I can understand certain <laughs> bits. I have noticed though, you get the same trolls in Spanish saying exactly the same things, yeah. like literally <laughs> word for word. They're just in Spanish. Yeah, I have noticed that. Yeah, but there's a girl from Spain, and and she does great outreach. Uh, I've, I've online. seen, I've seen, I've seen. Yeah, yeah. And she has like uh, sometimes she has like two thousand people. Uh, at once, uh, actually, on that note, she's got some really good graphics as well. Does she design them herself? Yeah, yeah, yeah really with, uh, with the aid of this uh, arti um, artificial intelligence, this AI, um, called Mid Journey. Mid Journey, yeah, yeah. yeah I've, I've noticed obviously some of the language I, I can't understand, but the graphics are brilliant, they really sort of like draw you in and they're really effective. Yeah, yeah, I think this from Deb is interesting in the sense that, um, I, I don't think this is so unbelievable in 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 the sense that the slitting the throats bit it, it it's it's unbelievable it doesn't compute in a vegan brain 
but the slitting of th throat spit isn't isn't uh, cruel because they're knocked out, they're unconscious, and it's all regulated, and there's a vet there, and all the rest of it. Whereas, if you if you just see somebody, um, you know, kicking them on the way into a slaughterhouse or kicking a dog, th this is this is not proper use of other animals. That's that's cruelty. Mm -hmm. the, it, it comes down really to the ideology of animal welfareism, which we're all brought up to believe, or we all we're all taught it's part of our socialization process. It's this issue of um, you know, non-cruel use is the promise of animal welfareism, but it's not it's not as though it's possible, it's it's common. And so this is why they often say when you, when you get a cruelty case, one bad apple suddenly. Oh, this is this is terrible stuff. It's not usually like this, and all that. And of course, because they're fitting back into this idea, it is. Yeah, slitting the throat of someone is not cruelty. Kicking them is. Mm -hmm. Now, from a vegan yeah. point of view, that's yeah. ludicrous. From a cultural point of view, it's totally explainable. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think that's why we find it difficult because obviously we've all reached this point now where we can't go backwards. We can no longer think like we used to. And obviously that's much easier for others to do so because they haven't evolved yeah. in that sense. <laughs> yeah, went to sleep, got up in the morning. Yeah, yeah. woke up. Been <laughs> yeah. be on the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, had my vegan Christmas dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm sure you, you two guys can definitely talk about this because like sometimes when i say well i've been vegan year, nine years now to someone that's been vegan a year they think i'm being patronizing but well, actually what i mean is probably for eight years of those nine i wasn't i was getting it wrong so i haven't had nine years of being perfect i've had nine years of learning from my mistakes each time so when i'm having these conversations with you i'm telling you about the experience of when i got it wrong and have learned better i'm not telling you i'm better than you or any the same and i'm sure it's the same for you guys obviously just a lot more time it's not necessarily you've been getting it right for 44 years or for 51 years there's been times where you haven't been and you've, you've had that opportunity to learn and correct from but it's not you know it's not patronizing to someone else it's just sometimes easier for them if i've only been vegan for 18 months to understand these language differences that now we're like, whoa, now nah, that's too much for us. Because well, I'll, tell you, we're, we're... I'll tell you one thing, right, Andy, on that point, is I think there's a lot of people, and maybe even in the movement, that don't believe me and Ronnie. Really? Well, they don't seem as, you know, sometimes we have had this conversation before where someone's gone, they were vegan for eight years, you know, and then it's like, yeah, 51, 44. It's a bit of a difference, but they're never as blown away by that statement as they were by like eight years. Is, is it because we're still alive, Roger, that I think, don't believe well, us? Actually, I, I think it's because the <laughs> vegan deterioration thing actually really gets to people. I think it's a little worm that gets in there and it gets under the skin and it's a worry and it kind of niggles uh, and everything. And so, you know, any ache or pain, oh, is, is you know. And so, yeah, so they, I, I do tend to think that that's what explains what you were saying, Andy, is you know, when an influencer goes, oh, I'm vegan seven years, it's kind of, no, that's impossible. You know I mean? It's come, you know. <laughs> but I think it's the social construction of it. And and, there, and some people are real fearful, I think. Of, well, maybe, um, maybe you should both half it and see if that makes any difference. If someone asks you the next few weeks, just say, oh, it's been about 18 years, 15 years, something like that, and see if they're a bit Well, I said, I said on, that, yeah, on that outreach I did um, last Sunday this when the woman was talking to me. So are you a vegan? I said, yeah, I've been a vegan for a while, which is true, isn't it? Yeah, I know yeah, this. still abused. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a vegan for a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still alive. <laughs> Uh, yeah, getting there, Ronnie, getting there. <laughs> right, folks. Um, well, uh, be before Cliff comes back once again, after... after, <laughs> after <laughs> yeah, after, after, after the weekend. Shift at work and all that. I, w I want to thank you for your, um, your conversation and your uh, input. And um, 
I don't know whether we're going to do this again. I suppose we'll we'll have to have a chat in our group uh, about that, but um, we shall see. But uh, as for everybody else, I will wish you um, good night and good morning, or whatever it is, and goodbye, Earthlings, for now. Thank you for having me.